Power Project family, how's it going? We have another amazing podcast for you today with two awesome dudes, Joe Sullivan and Jake Benson. These two are the hosts of the PED podcast or the Performance Education Discussion podcast. But we did end up talking about PEDs on this episode and a lot of stuff that you guys have probably never heard about. So stay tuned for that. But if you don't know who these guys are, Jake has an extremely strong deadlift, but he is a brain. This guy has a mind on him for like biochemistry. It was really crazy. And Joel is a biomechanics wizard along with breaking his own all-time squat world record from 822. And he just broke it at seven weeks ago with 837. Joel is extremely powerful and he's going to be talking about his comeback in this podcast and a lot of other amazing things that will help you guys out. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy this amazing episode with the host of the PED podcast, Joe Sullivan and Jake Benson. Power Project family, I want all of you guys to look good when you work out. You see, I have a problem. I don't like things that aren't quality, and if they're not quality, I don't take care of them. And the awesome thing is that we partner with Viore Clothing. Now, the cool thing about Viore is that it's apparel that I almost feel guilty wearing in the gym. But the great thing and the reason why I love Viore is that, number one, the clothes feel, look, and fit amazing. But number two, even though they're super high quality, they don't break the freaking bank, right? So you can get super high quality clothing and not go into debt trying to get it. <laughs> Andrew, please tell the people how to get it. On top of that, we're going to give you guys an awesome deal with 20% off your first order. Head over to viori.com. That's V-U-O-R-I.com slash power project. And you'll receive 20% off your first order automatically. No code needed. Links to them down in the description, as well as the podcast show notes. Head over there right now. What's up, Power Project family? This episode's about to come with some heat. So with that being said, here's a medical disclaimer. Mark Bell's Power Project podcast YouTube channel does not contain medical advice. We're not doctors nor the featured guests. The contents of this YouTube channel, such as videos, text, graphics, images, and other material are intended for entertainment, informational, and educational purposes only and not for the purpose of rendering medical advice. The contents of this YouTube channel are not intended for the to substitute professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Although we make efforts to keep medical information on our channel updated, we cannot guarantee that the information on our channel reflects the most up-to-date research. Consult your physician for medical advice. Always seek the advice of a physician or other qualified healthcare providers regarding a medical condition. Never disregard or delay seeking professional medical advice or treatment because of something you have heard in a YouTube video. Before taking any medications, over-the-counter drugs, supplements, or herbs, consult a physician for thorough evaluation. This channel does not endorse any medications, vitamins, herbs, nor do we condone the use of illegal drugs or use of drugs for unintended purposes. A qualified physician should make a decision based on each person's medical history and current prescriptions. Enjoy. So make sure I'm not fucking stuff up once we start going here. Or maybe I should. Maybe things should be screwed up. Yeah. Right? Yeah, how those things are screwed up. Yeah. How did you guys how did you guys meet? What's this uh I mean, it's obvious it was love at first sight. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's not right. Wait. Dating app. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Dating app. Uh -huh. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Me and Kara don't know about that. Yeah. Saw his profile. Yeah. It happens. <laughs> had to super like or whatever. How'd you guys meet? Yeah. Uh, I guess I, first time we met was at the showdown. Yeah. Yep. Showdown the, fir the first showdown. I followed you on Instagram. Like I think we followed each other for I don't know, a couple of years or mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And then yeah. we actually met at the showdown, and then this year's showdown too. We both competed. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty much it. It was like the whole like inter like not even internet friends. Like I, we hadn't really talked, but like I knew who you were because he he was competing. We compete in the same weight class, like which is funny because he's my coach and like my best friend. But it's like we compete against one another realistically. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I. I first followed you because I was like, who the fuck is this 220? Like, why are you so good at deadlifting? Like, fuck this guy, you know? Just But, like, I followed him, and then we met at the showdown, and I'm like, oh, he's a really, really nice guy. He's really cool and, like, seems to know what he's talking about. And then, like, over uh, going into this most recent showdown, um, uh, probably, like, in March, or about the same time I moved to Las Vegas, but, like, you contacted me about, like, setting up some, like, phone calls because I do, like – phone call consults and whatever and jake just wanted to talk training with me and we're talking about stuff and then i in that conversation because like we hadn't really talked at at uh like extensively before and then i am so i'm talking to him I'm like holy shit this guy is really smart you know it's like this guy is really really intelligent like he knows what he's talking about but the thing like we complement one another because he's incredibly cerebral and like we're both we're both fucking weirdos but like he is incredibly cerebral and like knowledgeable when it comes comes uh, to terms of like biochemistry and like uh, the chemical 
like ev- everything involving like the shit that is above my pay grade, and I'm kind of like the dumbed down intellectual meathead version no, of that. No, 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 that's not true because I feel the same, but the other way. He's really good at like you know you have this nerve here and it connects here, and you do this and it activates this bullshit stuff. And yeah. I'm like, I have I don't know. I, I'm like about. the biomechanics guy, whereas he's like the the chemistry guy. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, the, like biomechanics and then biochemistry. That's like the two. Yeah, we're, we're almost the same person though because we uh, we both actually got accepted to Brown University. Yeah, right. Oh, yep. and we both didn't Ivy and, League school, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Nerds, we we nerds. both went to a religious school instead. Yep. Really? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So wow. yeah. I always call myself the Mormon version of him mm-hmm. because I, I ended yeah. up going to BYU. I served mm-hmm. on a, served the mission and everything. That's why I didn't go to Brown. I'm sorry. You do some soaking over there? <laughs> 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 Fuck yeah. Yes. He knows what it is. <laughs> <laughs> He's so proud of himself. Like Are you embarrassed? <laughs> yeah. I wish Kiara was here. No, okay. No, no. no it's His wife. It's great. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, he he ended up. What was the school you went to? John, right, Catholic school. Yeah, John Carroll University. I went to a okay. Jesuit a Jesuit college. Okay. Um, and I because like, I was in I was in Roman Catholic school ever since I was a kid. You know, like I was I was active in the church. I was a uh, fucking like I did volunteer work and Whoa. shit like that. And I'm I, it's like I'm that's why I talk shit to God before the podcast uh, started. <laughs> I was like, fuck you, bro. You know, because like we have a very weird relationship. Like I I think he's great, but it's like I'd fight him if I could because he's a bitch. But, <laughs> But I love him, but he's a bitch. Yeah. So hey, man. He's yeah, sober, yeah. too, and he's still yeah, saying yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, see, yeah, yeah. Hey, he's right here. He's with us yeah, at all yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but, but yeah, so, like, we're, we're but it, well, it's like any anything. Like, it, we're kind of like the, uh, like, it's the same, like, type of light shown through a different, at, uh, shown through the prism at, like, a different angle. Like, I mm-hmm. came out this way, Jake came out this way, and we just, like, we really compliment one another because, like, both of our, both of our significant others will, like, continually bitch because we just we talk way too long. We have a po- like we have our own podcast. We'll, What's it called? Uh, the PED podcast. It's performance education and discussion, but it's <laughs> obviously a play on words because performance right. enhancing drugs, and we talk about drugs a lot. Yeah, but um, like they'll continually shit talk us because we'll be like, okay, short episode, or like, oh, we're only going to talk for. Like, I'll be on the phone for like just five minutes, and then it goes for like an hour and a half. And then we end the recording and then we continue to talk for an additional hour and it's like, fuck, I got to go do shit. You know, like I can't keep doing this, but we're very, very, very talkative because we're both probably on the spectrum to some degree. (laughs) Well, I told you I have severe ADHD, so Mm -hmm. I'm like all over the place, but So Joe, you were doing a squat years ago Mm -hmm. and it was pretty amazing because you bent the bar so much that you couldn't even get the weight back into the rack and people saw the video and I think a lot of people are like, oh shit, like. That was a pretty clever way that you got out of it because mm-hmm. you were able to hook uh, one side of the weight on the rack and the other side you couldn't get to. And so you just kind of dumped it off your back and mm-hmm. it looked like you uh, remained uh, totally safe. It looked like it, it was no, it didn't beat you up too much, but mm-hmm. that's not what happened. You got uh, pretty injured from that, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's, uh, that's, why, uh, that's why Jake and I, and you can see on the video, um, that's why Jake and I, uh, or one of the things that basically like caused Jake and I to uh, talk about this to the extent that we have is because if you watch the video, I do hook the one side and visually I look like I'm fine. But what actually happened in this video, I herniated my C6 and C7 uh, and caused a compression injury to my thoracodorsal and dorsal scapular nerves. Most of the brunt of the, so you see, I twist right there. Yeah. And it, it ends up a lot of the weight is singularly on my left side. Mm-hmm. That right there at, caused a lot of damage to the dorsal. Yeah, I punched that right arm out, and the left side gets all of the brunt, all of the brunt of the weight for a half a second. But God it's damn. it's long enough to push that shoulder down and do some serious damage to the dorsal scapular nerve. Dorsal scapular nerve plays a big role in scapular control, like shoulder blade control, mm-hmm. and uh, the use of your lap muscle and your tri- and the long head of your tricep that same year my bench i like i have the old all-time world record squat in the 220 weight class right now squatted 800, 837 pounds but my first all-time world record goal was actually the bench press because in that same training cycle i benched 575 pounds at that time the 220 record i think was like 571 or 572 wow. but after that that happened I experienced an extreme drop off in strength. There was no injury. There was no pain. Like there was no tangible injury. There wasn't any pain. There wasn't any like hurting or numbness or whatnot. I literally just was failing to contract my tricep and my lat. And I went from being able to bench 575 
to dropping to being unable to do a push up without winging of my scapula. Uh, and I couldn't lock out anything more than 225 pounds. Couldn't, couldn't feel my arm whatsoever if I put it overhead. And that's been it. Like we talked about this previously, like it's like, why are you doing the things in the train in training? I didn't know how to get past that injury. I talked to a lot of, a couple of different physical therapists, neurologists and whatnot. And like, no one could really provide me with any significant answers. So I would back off, I'd back off, then come back. And like it, sometimes it would work. Like the first showdown that we competed against one another, I bench pressed five, 507 pounds. That was After in, this whole yes, thing. Yes. Yeah. So there, there it's like, so it's like, there'll be like six months where it doesn't fucking work. And then six months where it's okay. And then six months where it doesn't six months where it does whatever. And, but, but the thing about it was the longer it went on, the length of dis like the dysfunctional time was getting longer and longer and longer because this past showdown, I was only able to manage, uh, manage to bench 446 pounds and it, there's significant lag in that left tricep. And I'm I was starting to like lose that sensation entirely and worried about like tricep atrophy and whatnot. Um, but so that, that's, that's, a vi it's like my viral video. I'm the guy that bent the bar, but that's a really like defining moment in my career. But it's exciting too, because like we talked about the, we have the philosophy of training, like, why are you doing the things that we're doing now? I can actually, I've been talking to you guys about, I'm implementing a lot of different stuff to actually come back from this injury. And recently I'm actually feeling progress. I can feel contractions again. I hit uh, 300 pounds on a uh, close grip incline, which previously even as soon as, or as close as six months ago, I couldn't do more than 185 on that movement. Mm -hmm. And that, and that's because of this guy, because he has that knowledge base that complements my own, that gave me a little, a path that I didn't even know was there. So that's, that's the one we're, we're on right now. And like the next beat I'm doing, it's to be determined, uh, but I'm very excited for it. So. So yeah. Jake, this is like, it's wild because you said you want some neurologists, a bunch of PTs and nobody could help you solve this, but you, you, you came up with some shit that has allowed him to progress. What, what different thing, how did you help him tackle that differently? You know, I think it, it really just comes down to caring. I think a lot of times, and I don't want to put every doctor on a blast, <gasps> but I think sometimes you come in and you know, you have this symptom, you have that symptom, whatever. And, and they like to kind of group people together and it's like, you know, well, I've seen a lot of people like this. It doesn't really get better or they, they kind of have like some set protocols that they go through. Like if you have this, you get that. If you have this, you get that. It's just, you know, A, A, B. But um, and I don't think it's really necessarily like a lack of, of knowledge or a lack of, of studying with some of the doctors or the people that you visited. I think it's just the lack of, of caring, being able to sit down and say, okay, what is happening here? Um, there's, there's plenty of information out there, right? Like what can cause... A nerve to not function and if you know if you're resourceful enough you can go figure that out it can be a b c d through z right and then you start kind of knocking it off okay it's not that that's not what happened it's not this that's not what happened okay i think it's probably this right and then so we made a game plan basically just sat down and said i think this is this is our best bet right and what was it um well it's a really really mind? in depth I mean, okay. we're, yeah. uh, part it's, of it's it. in progress. So that's like, okay. I don't really want to put the cart before the horse because like my, me, me being the egotistical asshole that I am, because <laughs> I like, I, I just said, fuck you to God. Like, like, <laughs> take, like read, read into that however you want. But like, <laughs> uh, I, like, I want to come back. Yeah. I want to, I want, I want to come back and not only like break my all time world record, but I want to annihilate it. Mm -hmm. Like, because I, this is the first time I've been hopeful. Like, I mean, you've been through a million different fucking injuries. Mm -hmm. Like you have, you have those where like this, it's not career ending, but it's career defining. It's like this, this one is going to be, if not insurmountable, incredibly difficult to work around. That's what I felt since 2018. I was like just getting what I can, like clawing and scratching for these small little things. But now that I've been working with Jake, like I don't, I don't really want to like call my shots, but like I told them if I, if I hit a bench PR on the platform, I'm going to kiss them on the fucking mouth. Like, I don't even care because like that was so unbelievable to me in, in previous experience that like now that I actually feel like I'm making progress, like I'm, I'm waking up and I'm excited to go train like my pressing movements mm -hmm. because it's, I'm progressing every single fucking time. And it's, it's like Jake can go into more detail, but like, I don't, I don't want to go into the whole thing, but it, a lot of it is a, uh, not only, not only like the way that I'm training, uh, focusing more on like the, uh, the mind muscle connection or like the neuromuscular, uh, side of things. 
Uh, but it's also like brain chemistry. Cause like I was talking to you guys before, uh, we started the podcast, like I started a lot of things at 20 years old. I made the jump from a tested, uh, federation to an untested federation. I've been on androgen since that time. I'm also, a, a stupid white kid that likes to have fun. So I've taken a, a couple of recreational drugs on occasion that are very, very dopamine, uh, they cause a lot of dopamine release in the brain. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I'm also, I, I can't even remember what the fuck I was going to say. And that's the fucking ADHD. I'm also diagnosed severe ADHD uh, and I've been prescribed Adderall since I was 20 years old. Which but is, but yeah, looking so, into the history is important to right. kind of mm -hmm. help you solve for this problem, right? Yeah. yeah and, 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 and dopamine and, is. And, the do and just no, yeah, no, the, do the doctors never fucking asked me that. Right. That right. was never a thing. They're like, oh, just do some nerve glides. Oh, you're not making progress. Okay, that's fine. Like then you're fucked. You know, but, right. But looking yeah. back on it, if you look at the, you know, the neurotransmitters in your brain, the, the biggest one that causes muscle contractions or your, or your motor reflexes is, is dopamine. Right. And we see, we go into his past and we see, oh, you've been, you've been really destroying your dopamine receptor basically. Right. It's kind of like if you grab a barbell, that deadlift bar, uh, a newbie comes in, and grabs it on a fresh new bar. It hurts, right? Your hand hurts. Mm -hmm. But over time, you build a callus, and that's the same thing with with dopamine. It's like when you start using like a painkiller. You like a lot of people have chronic pain. They get on a painkiller and opiate. First time they take it, probably makes them a little high, right? Like, like oh, I'm happy, whatever. And all of a sudden, it stops working. It's the same thing, right? Like you become sensitive and you build up calluses to whatever you're doing in life in general. And so, looking at him, a lot of you know recreational drug use, um, some specific ASs. That that you know are, are working on your dopamine receptor as well. Trimble, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, steroids. Oh, steroids. Trimbalone. Yeah. Okay. Trembolone. It acts on the dopamine receptors, and it's okay. like if, if you run trend too long, like that. So basically, again, I'm sorry. No, you off, do but, it. But it's uh like I I would always find that adding trend in would help my my contraction. I would be able to push harder through the tricep. So I was very reliant on adding. Tri I don't know. Can, we, can I talk about this of on the podcast? Okay, I, don't know. I don't fucking know. We have yeah. a PED podcast, so I don't know. If no, I don't you know can talk about okay, anything. That's fine. Cause I'll put myself, I'm open about anything. I'm, I'm whatever. But, um, cause if I can help anybody like make better choices and actually think about what they're doing, that's what we're here for. Um, but I like, I would find that trend Balone helped me going into meat meats because it helped me get more out of the contractions in my tricep. But because it was like, okay, six months would be good, six months would be bad. It started being like seven months good, five months bad, eight months good, or eight months bad, five months good, whatever. Like the good was getting less and less. And me not knowing what to do, I would stay on trend. I would keep pushing the trend. And there was a period of time where I was on, on trend balloon for over a year. And that's, that's completely irresponsible. Like no one should fucking do that. But I was, I was trying to to get better. I was, I was chasing my goal. I was clawing and scratching, like I was saying. Um, but the thing is that it acts on the dopamine receptor and then all it's doing is like oversaturating, oversaturating. So like the high, the high that I was getting, the high that you get, it's not high anymore. It's not, you're not getting the benefit. The benefit is like, it, it goes away because it's not novel. You're oversaturated. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's, that's really the only difference is I, I, I just sat down and we, we just had a conversation just like friends, right? Sat down. Okay. <clears throat> what, what's your past? Where, where could this be going? And that kind of knocked out that list. Like we have this list of things that could cause his symptoms and, and we start seeing like this trend of, okay, we've had a reliance on drugs, right? We've had a dependency on drugs. We've had a lot, a lot of dopamine uh, stimulation. So, so what, so how can we get that back? Right? Like how do we reverse that? And that's where the plan came together. So then, you know, we, I put together this plan and I, I came to Joe and said, this is what we're going to do. This is the plan, basically a year long plan. The first eight to 10 weeks is going to go like this. Once we hit that point, this is what we're hoping for. Like at the end of the first, I don't know, eight to 12 weeks, we should be getting this result. And if we're not, what, what, we like, need to change it. What was like, um, I know there's a, like, you, it's so deep. What are you guys talking about right now? But like, what were you looking to, for him to feel? So, so his, his big thing is the tricep, right? He uh -huh. can't use his tricep. So at the end of the eight to 12 weeks, we were hoping that we would not have atrophy in the tricep, but actually be able to grow and use the tricep, right? Like we, we don't see that lag. That's what we're hoping for is that we're not seeing that lag. And then we also wanted him to be basically a little bit more aerobically in shape. And so we're coming up on that mark which we set it as eight to 12 weeks. I think it's been eight mm -hmm. and we're seeing like, we're getting exactly what we wanted. Right. And now we're like, okay, cool. And now we kind of get to go into phase two. So phase two actually starts today. Yeah. 
right? Which is kind of cool. We're going to do it here today, which is really yeah. fun. Yeah, so, I'm actually going to load my spine for the first time since since uh, the showdown. Wow. So, like squatting or deadlifting or whatever, whatever he told me to do. So, mm -hmm. but that's the thing. Like that's why I have I have no. Like it's so easy to call you my best friend because like we talk every day and it's the fact that I trust you because it's the care. He obviously cares. Like he, he oh, I'm sorry. Uh, he obviously gives a fuck, you know? Um, like he, he cares about what I'm doing and because he has, like I can feel that, that buy-in from him, it's so easy for me to trust him. And then I'm like, if it's, it's one of those things because people will ask me like, oh, well, when's the next competition? And it's like, I'm not, I don't know. I, I want to do the showdown next year, but I'm not in any rush to because I want to be where I want to be before I get back on the platform. And it's it's not as if I'm taking time off because there are a lot of people who are like, oh, I'm just stepping away a little bit. I Every single training session, every time, like last night, or we, we coached Hunter at the meet, everybody went out, had like got, got drunk and like had fun and whatnot. But me, I'm just chilling. I drank a bunch of diet Coke and I smoked a little bit of weed and I'm just hanging out, you know, because every single thing that I do right now is, is, is done with an objective with the end goal in sight. And like that, it's, uh, it's easy for me to buy into that because I'm seeing the progress. The plan is working so far and not only that, but I can just feel how much care Jake has for the plan and for me in general. How do you work your way around some of these things? Because you still want to be strong. You're still training. So how do you work your way around? You just don't take steroids for a while or you supplement with something else? I mean, I know the answer is not to not take steroids. So <laughs> how are you guys kind of figuring out how to navigate this? And is like coffee cut out and monster drinks and things like that? Well, do you want to do you want to take a stab at that? Or? Yeah, sure. Um, so ba uh, basically, it's it's just it's it's all done reasonably. It's not like doing like getting off of everything cold turkey. Like when I first started doing this, it was like I still would take an Adderall occasionally, you know, because like I literally couldn't function. Like mm -hmm. it 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 triggered like when I'm not when I'm not managing it, it triggers a lot of a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety. It's not it's not just like, oh, I'm a spaz. Haha, ha, funny. You know, it's literally I can't handle my own anxiety. I can't shut my own thoughts up. And I it causes it's basically like it causes paralysis by analysis because I'm just I'm I'm freaked the fuck out all the time. I'm always always hyped up and worried about nothing. Uh, so it's just about doing it in a manageable way. But uh, that like a lot of things that we added in, like whether it was herbal supplements uh, that or lifestyle changes. or lifestyle changes. But, uh, yeah, let me cut you off. Yeah, like, do super, it super quick. But so like AAS is like if we if you want to be you know specific about the AAS, you know what is the AAS doing? Right, androgenic like, anabolic right? steroids. Yeah. Yeah. Steroids. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll just say steroids. Sorry, that's that's my fault. <laughs> But uh, that has a, it, it has a very specific purpose. So what can we do to replicate that purpose, right? Like for him, it's like we, we, another part of the plan was we wanted him to be bigger. So we're taking down his, his steroids, his total steroid use, but we wanted him to get bigger and leaner. How does that happen, right? Well, there are other ways to go about it, right? So we started using insulin and growth hormone. We started implementing other things, a bunch of lifestyle changes, and it, and it all kind of the training and the PEDs and the, uh, and the nutrition all has to comply right mm -hmm. everything's timed out you know for a reason mm -hmm. and he's able to grow still like we're up to mm -hmm. 250 pounds he's just as lean as he's ever been mm -hmm. um with, with a lower amount of, yeah. of of steroid use yeah but it, it's and then to answer that question like how do you go about life you still want to enjoy yourself you want to still have a life it's just about and and we've said this like a million times today but dependency right it, it's not so much that hey you can't go out and you can't have a drink you like you don't or you can't ever have nicotine you can't ever have like whatever, it's just like, we can't do that every day, right? Like if you're gonna do it, like, you know, after a meet, you know, and you're celebrating with your friends or whatever, that's, that's an okay time to do that, right? But if that becomes like, oh man, we did that yesterday, let's do it again tonight. That's where we're having an issue, right? Mm -hmm. So, and he knows that too. It's like, he's not doing that every night or actually at this point, you're not really not doing it ever, yeah. right? But, but it wasn't ever like, you can't have anything. It was like, you know, let, let's not become dependent. Let's not make this a regular lifestyle thing. Mm -hmm. Can I ask both of you guys this? Because um, for athletes or younger guys that are 
you know, they want to be stronger or they're maybe they're starting to get into substances, et cetera. As far as dopamine is concerned, because it doesn't seem that a lot of people are paying attention to that, like the amount of pre-workout stimulants that they take, the amount of hype they need, nose torque, all these different mm -hmm. things that may be adding up. In the moment, it may seem fine to take two scoops or three scoops of pre-workout and whatever else is going on. Mm -hmm. But what have you guys noticed, especially with your personal experience, what do you guys think is the long-term effects that maybe people don't realize that's going on with their dopamine and how can they start um how can they start doing things right now to counteract those things from even happening um and just make sure that they have a long good training career so let's i'm going to start with the second part of that what can you do now to you know avoid those effects uh, a lot of that is is being able to get yourself down right so everyone's always like up 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 i need to wake up i need my coffee i need my adderall i need my whatever uh, I got to be able to function today. I want to feel energized. I want to feel productive. I want to feel like clear. I want to whatever, right? But if you if you can focus on being able to to bring yourself down too, like, and and this is through like conscious breathing techniques. It can be through uh, you know a million other things. And it's just it, like a lot of it sounds goofy. Like, yeah. what it, are you a, a monk, right? Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. A, it's a lot. It's a lot of like hooey hippy dippy bullshit. Like, like what? What like, else? Conscious like, breathing, like, like me meditation, blue blocker lenses, uh, actually like. Uh, dicta dictating like your uh, wakefulness, like r rising and resting based on like your circadian rhythm, like yeah. the the sun, like right. getting a little like, weird, yeah, yeah, earthing, yeah, 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 being yeah, a little yeah, bit of a yeah, hippie. Yeah, Absolutely, but, but, but that's <laughs> the thing. Like every like people will hear this and they're right. like, "Oh, these guys are fucking weirdos," you know. But it's it's literally nature. Like mm -hmm. we we are meant to wake up in the morning when the sun comes up and start winding down and and decompressing when the sun goes down. Right. So how like this is one of the biggest things that help that's helped me and I. It kind of bridges into the first part of the question like how can you make it sustainable or like what like what are you going to be feeling if you're just like trying to go up all the time like mm -hmm. it's it's what everybody feels you wake you wake up you go to bed and you're like fuck i need to sleep i need to rest and you crash and you you just crash and fucking die mm -hmm. and then you wake up and you're like oh my god i'm still fucking tired like i need to i need my goddamn energy drink i need to take an adderall i need to fucking i need to wake up you know i gotta go train i gotta be i gotta go function so they do that but like with the analogy that we were saying earlier, it's 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 a roller coaster. Life is a roller coaster. You need to allow you need to allow like a drop down so that you can go back up to the high that you right. want to get to. Like, like if you're on a roller you coaster, you can't stay high all the time. The funnest part is coming down, right? You yeah. get to the top, you finally come down. It's exciting, it's exhilarating. We can't go down forever, right? You have this period yeah. of time where you you go back up and it's slow, mm -hmm. and, and you need that and time patient. period too. Mm -hmm. But like, if if you can really focus on 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 bringing yourself down, having those restful periods, right? Your your conscious breathing. You're off your phone. Like, mm -hmm. That's a really mm -hmm. big one. Mm -hmm. We like me and my wife. We don't even bring our phone into the bedroom ever, hey. right? Like it's outside. We plug our phones in outside. The the yeah. blue light blocking glasses are going on. You know, around like six or seven, or just whenever you go to bed, we start just putting it on a couple hours before. But you're bringing yourself down. And then by the time you wake up, you're like, man, I feel rested. I don't need coffee. I don't need this, right? Again, like coffee's not the problem. It's you can't have it every day. Like if you need that every day, you got to like, you know, look at yourself and say, why do I need this every day? How have I gotten here? Mm -hmm. And that and that right there is like what I feel now because like I, my normal was always up. I was always up. E even when I was resting and relaxing, I was never actually in that, that parasymp is it parasympathetic? The the, parasympathetic? The the re the rest and digest or like feed and breed Parasympathy. state or whatever like I never allowed myself to get there uh, because I was always too up and now that I've actually allowed myself to go back down like come off the super excessive dopamine producing whatever the fuck things like I didn't know that I could feel this good and not be on drugs like I call I, yeah, I, I yeah. call this thing the twilight zone where. You're you're not up, but you're not down. You're like that wired tired. Where you're like, dude, I really need to sleep. Wired, I'm, wired tired. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm really tired, but I can't fall asleep. I don't feel rested. Maybe even fall asleep, but you wake up and you still feel like you're wired tired, right? Like so your eyes hurt. You feel brain foggy. You feel like ugh, right? Mm -hmm. But that that's what I call the twilight zone. That's you trying to stay up too long. Mm -hmm. Like that is, and, and and there's like it's a fine line because some people you have to get a lot done. Like I'm sure with you guys too, you know, you're busy all the time. It's like, I have to get these things done. And sometimes that's going to play an effect, but you also want to be careful with it and make sure it's not, this is not a normal thing. Everything we do like in life just has a lot of like idle time, you know? And if you look at like, just look at anything in the world, um, you know, the world is primarily made up of, of water, you know? 
uh, outer space. It's fantastic. It's cool. There's a lot of stars and a lot of suns and billions of planets and billions of things out there that we don't even really know about. But what is it comprised of mostly? Nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or at least stuff that we can't see, right? right. Like That's it's comprised of space. There's a lot of space and time. And, and you think about your lifts, you think about the lifts that get posted on Instagram or the bent barbell situation. Um, you know, how, how many, you know, warm ups did you take with the bar? How, how much preparation happened before you even touched the bar? Um, not even for that day, but like the week Leading previous and the months previous, you know, to you trying an 800 pound squat uh, or whatever it is. So I think, I think it's important for people to recognize that being idle and kind of feeling like blah, <laughs> that should happen here and there. Should, like yeah. you're not really yeah. designed to be happy all the time mm -hmm. as much as I would love for, to see people smiling all the time. Uh, we're just, that's not in real life, we're not designed to be that way all the time. Yes. It's great to try to be that way as often as possible. And you might be able to kind of fake yourself into it by smiling to the first couple of people you see in the morning and, you know, having just good habits in those senses. But, uh, there's going to be a lot of ups, a lot of downs, and even in between that, there's just a lot of nothing. I right, just right. I just got done traveling. I, I traveled with my wife, and then I came back from that, and then I traveled with my whole family, with my kids and stuff, too. No one comes back from vacation. They're like, the flight, you know, the, the amount of the amount of flying and the amount of time that went by uh, my for my travel day was 18 hours. Like, uh, then I had to wait for my hotel room because it wasn't ready when I got there. I had to wait for the rental car. Like, no one talks about any of that. They're like, it was fucking dope. It was sick. And they tell you about all the quick little highlight things, the things that were fun, the things that were actually memorable. A couple of years from now, I won't even remember any of the actual time that it was that I you know, traveled or whatever, uh, I'm only going to remember the good times. And so I think a lot of times I think, especially this day and age, I think that people think that you're always supposed to be happy mm -hmm. and that it's abnormal to feel anxiety or it's saying abnormal to feel stress. Maybe it's abnormal to feel tremendous amounts of it. Maybe different people feel different amounts of it. And so that should be something that you might look into because maybe your depression is uncontrollable. Um, but for the most part, we're all supposed to have a little bit of all those things. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. agree more. But some people they get these symptoms. I, I, you know, I'm anxious. Everybody gets anxious, right? But then they think I need a prescription to solve this, right? Or I need this. I need to be able to to feel happy all the time. And, and that's so true. You don't need to feel happy all the time. There should be time. And and taking advantage of that time. I really like the space analogy. Most of it's nothing, right? And like everyone thinks they're so busy, but there's so much time. If you look at it, you're like, well, I just sat on my phone for like 30 <laughs> minutes right here. And, and, and sometimes, man, you can, you can do stuff with that, like a little meditation, a little conscious breathing, a little, or like sending a, a message to your mom or your grandma or something, like making just like, does that take any effort? No, not really, right? But you're starting to make use of that time. And, uh, you know, that can be very helpful. Yeah, and and two things with that, like it's like you're not you're not going to remember the 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 annoying parts of that vacation. It's it's always the highs that you remember, but but you have to have those little annoying hiccups or like the the your rental car getting delayed and you're like ah oh, fuck goddamn it you know like this is fucking stupid. You have you have to have as dumb as it sounds and as cliche a lot of these cli but cliches are they're 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 there for a reason. People say it for a reason. You have to have. Uh, like peaks and valleys, like life is peaks and valleys, training is peaks and valleys, drugs are peaks and valleys, whatever. But you have to have valleys, you have to have that dip down so that you can have that peak. And that's that roller coaster visual. You have to go down so that you can go back up. And you have to, when you're up, you have to be prepared to go back down again. You can't have that high all the time. So. Yeah. Nothing compares to like the food that you eat after mm -hmm. you competed in bodybuilding. Oh, uh, no, powerlifting. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought yeah. you did some bodybuilding mm -hmm. as well. I, I, nothing, I train like it, but not, yeah. Not yeah. Nothing training. compares yeah. to that meal that you get, you know, when you did spend all that time, you spent all that time, you know, starving yourself away from those delicious foods for a while. Then you have an opportunity to eat them again. And that's like the greatest meal of your life. Yeah. Uh, we'll do like coll collegiate wrestling. So like same thing. Oh, like, yeah, uh, bro. Like, yeah, that's why powerlifting cutting is it's easy. It's, it's cake. <laughs> uh, but like, I, it's like I, I still remember after states when I, I got I got I got seventh seventh in Michigan and I I didn't even do that well but like I I, I did good because I got all state but I remember I had two vanilla frosties from Wendy's and two large fries and that that was the best fucking meal I ever had because <laughs> mm -hmm. I was just as soon as it hit my mouth I was like whoa goddamn it was it was amazing yeah. okay.
you said you did trend for a year. Yeah. Um, and at this point <clears throat> in time, you were you're doing quite a few things. You you it seemed that at that point you're like more is better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and right now on YouTube and everywhere, like people are being very transparent about drug use, and some people I think are just maybe spreading. I don't know, sometimes misinformation about things. Uh, people are going to go down that road and they're going to do it anyway. What are the things that they need to be thinking for as far as safety? Because, you know, we've been seeing all these bodybuilders dying of heart attacks. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are, it still seems like it's kind of the wild west as far as information is concerned about these things. Yeah. So what do people, younger lifters, because younger guys are especially super interested in it because it'll get help. It'll help you get bigger, faster, it'll help right. you get stronger, faster. How do they need to be thinking about this? Because more is not always better, right? Mm -hmm. So what are some things that maybe you dealt with or you've done where you're like, okay, avoid this, avoid this, avoid this. And how can they, how can they go through that realm safely? Well, so that, that's kind of, that's, it's, it's hard to say that because like everything that we do, there's always danger associated with what we do. Like True. it's, you have to understand that there's a, I mean, you can, you, it's, it's all, but that, to that point, it's dose dependent. Like most things are dose dependent and they're all individual because like you can kill yourself with caffeine. You can take too much caffeine. Uh, anything in excess can, can result in like really, really bad shit, mm. but you need to be proactive about it. Like we, like on the podcast that we do, we're very, uh, we speak about blood work a lot and actually having like a, a keeping, uh, keeping an eye on and having, not just getting blood work after a cycle and being like, okay, I'm fine. Getting consistent blood work done so that you know what your normal is seeing a trend and basically understanding, okay, this is where I was at after this. This is where I was at. Let me interrupt this. just yeah. for one second. Something that's really important with people getting their blood work done, don't shop around for the answer that you want to hear. Right, right, and yes. Be very cautious of that because I think that's what a lot of people do. Like I might send the blood work to you and I might send it to you. I might send it to another friend and I'm just waiting for someone to say, hey, dude, you're you're good to go. Yeah. You can take more shit if you mm -hmm. want or whatever, right. whatever the circumstance is. But I see a lot of people doing that. So I think that that's something that people need to be cautious of. Yeah, a absolutely. And it's... and. And blood work isn't always the answer. It doesn't always tell you everything. Some because like blood work doesn't doesn't test brain chemistry. It it doesn't. It's not always going to tell you like okay you're you're like if if I got blood work done it wouldn't let me know like okay you've literally had like an excess of dopamine for eight fucking years like you won't know that you it's it's all a factor. It's being it's it's the philosophy of training. It's the philosophy of, philosophy of life. It's having a why. Like, this is why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. And this is why these things are happening. Mm. It, tell, it tells you or gives you an inkling or an, a thought or an idea as to why some of the things that you're experiencing are happening. Mm. And, and it's just being proactive about it. Because, like, and, and I'll tell you, it's not, fu it's not fun being on, uh, like, do a dose of trend uh, for an entire year. Like, you, it, it's insomnia, it's, it's irritability, it's, it's whatever. And, like, uh, we were talking, I'm, this is above my pay grade, but, like, with, in terms of, like, T, uh, T3 production, natural, produ like, thyroid production or thyroid function, uh, paired with, like, the dopamine shit going on with trend, like, that's how you and get the into, the, it, stimulation yeah, and... that, that's where you get into the irritability factor and whatnot. You can, you can mitigate those things, but it only goes so far. And if you get into the realm where it's like, okay, these are the side effects of this, so I'm going to take these things to combat these side effects, but now these things have been on them too long, so I'm going to take these things to combat these side effects, and then you're on this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing, and it all started because of this one thing, and then it's like, okay, well, why are you on this one thing for a year? And it's like, uh, fuck, just because I am. Right. And it's and like the whole thing unravels and it's like, fuck, dude. like you're killing yourself or putting yourself, you're giving yourself a much higher chance of getting fucked up somehow because you just decided to do this dumbass fucking thing because you're too stubborn to back off and get like, talk to somebody who's smarter than you and devote time to a real off season. What made you stop? Um, desperation, honestly. Like it was, it wasn't a health scare. It wasn't anything like that. It was literally desperation because like I, uh, well, okay. So two things. And I'm going to, do you I'm, think you could say the same thing about being on it for a year that it was maybe yes. some desperation of like, just, you're just trying to be the best as fast as you possibly can be. Right. A absolutely. And so, and that kind of leads into the, the thought that just popped into my head because I'll, I'll like, I'm really, really grateful for Briani in this aspect because like I, 
I like I've dealt with depression. I suicide attempt at 17 years old. Like I was I've I've dealt with I've been through a lot of stuff. I've had a very interesting life and we don't have to go into all of it, but it's like I've experienced a lot of things, a lot of death, a lot of loss, a lot of whatever. Um, but I never thought that I would be here for a long time. I was always the type of guy that just kind of I didn't really think that there was like not that there wasn't a future for me, but like I didn't see like I didn't think growing old was like in the cards for me, but then I'm really, really grateful because I met Briani and I, this, she is my perfect partner. Honestly, like you guys saw us out there. Like I, I look at her and I'm like, fuck you dumbass. You know, like I, I love her, yeah, but cute. like, we, yeah, it, it's, it's <laughs> cute. It's dumb. I hate it. But like, it's, it's like, I see a future with her and that like, that is part of the desperation because I want, I not, I still want to succeed at what I'm doing. I still want to be the best in the world. That's always the goal. Mm -hmm. But I also have become desperate for the life after powerlifting too. I I see kids. I see growing old. I see like I see shit other than this oh, at this man. point. So it, the yeah. wheels are falling off, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're getting yeah. soft, and yeah. oh, you're going to yeah. start to admire people that are dads, and it's just fucking. <laughs> The music's going to be too loud. You're not going to be able to. Dude, you, have I mean, no, you have no idea we're already there. I, you know, I think that <laughs> with kids, though, that's something they don't see. You know, you're 18, 19, 20 years old, and you see freaking Larry Wills doing some crazy whatever. Why is it always Larry Wheels? Yeah. Yeah. Why is he so strong? What's that guy's deal? Dude, yeah. He's a demigod. Yeah. Or well, God. Is he really? Yeah. Yeah. Did you find that out? Yeah. Distant cousin. Okay, it's yeah. starting, to make, it's starting <laughs> to make some sense now. What's that yeah. say about you, dude? I'm joking, yeah, right? Say, yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> But yeah, you, yeah, it, no, and uh, you know they see that, and they're like, "Well, I, I've heard through rumors that you know Larry's running this, or like this mm. guy, or my idol, you know, or I saw Joe squat eight thirty seven. He said he ran trend, so freak, I'm gonna run trend, right?" And and they don't think about that long term. No one like when you're 18, 19, you don't think about the long term. You don't think of yourself at fifty, sixty. You're just like, dude, I'm gonna be a badass. Like I want to be a badass right now, and, and so they they put that all behind, but. I think a lot of these, you know, powerlifters or any athlete that, you know, bodybuilders, whatever, you get to like, you know, 28, 29, 30, you start realizing like, I'm not ready. I'm, I don't, I don't want to die early, you know, and, and they wish they wouldn't have done taking these routes that they had in the first place. So, you know, to the, to the younger generation that's kind of getting into this and they see this guy doing this or, or looking that way, I, I would say just be patient and try to find somebody um that that is smart enough to just say like hey you know this is the first step it, it and a lot of times it's not steroids right mm -hmm. there's there are a lot of peds out there that are not steroids that are not going to give you the long-term you know abuse that steroids will and, and so it's like you know there are a lot of avenues out there but steroids are just kind of like the the porn of it you know everyone likes to look at that and be like whoa yeah that's that's freaking awesome that's going to be quick that's going to be you know two questions for you guys um how long after you started lifting and developing and going down the route of strength and muscle, how long did it take for you to hop on something? I, so seven years I started, I started my first competition in powerlifting was in 2007. Mm -hmm. And then I hopped on in 2015. So a little, a little over seven years, a little over seven yeah. years. Yeah. Um, because, and this is, like on the, the reason I went on is completely selfish reasons. Like it was actually the same year that I met you in passing, and I oh, was great. I was like I was no <laughs> I yeah, that time. Time. It was <laughs> fucking fault. No, it's not his fault. But it, but it, but that I sold him some of, out of the back of my car. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, coincidence. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Here's a slingshot and a little bit. Of <clears throat> Halo tested. <laughs> but but what? Because I I saw you at the Arnold. I I was just like, what's up at the slingshot booth? And I saw him. And I saw a, I went and met a bunch of the guys at the animal cage. Mm. And again, like this plays into the fact that I'm an egotistical asshole. I was, e I was this way when I was natural. Like it's, it's part of, part of my fucking brain. But, but in that year I went to the animal cage and in meeting those guys, it wasn't like, it wasn't as if I like met Jesse Norris. Uh, it was like Ben Seath, Grant Higa, Dan Green, like the, the guys in like 2014, yeah. like that were like big, the YouTube animal underground, Jeremy Hamilton, uh, uh, Herbert, like those guys, I, it wasn't that I saw them and I was like, Oh my God, these are my heroes. They're larger than life. I saw them and I shook their hands and I was like, they're just people. They're just like me. If they can do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. Fuck them. 
Literally, like I was. It's literally like I. It's I was joking in the car ride over. Like I'm powered by spite. It's like I'm just like if they can do it, fuck them. I can do it. Fuck these guys. If they're that fucking good, I can fucking be up there. Yeah. You know, like fuck this. I'm fucking. I'm that. I'm that motherfucker. I'm gonna go fucking do that. You mm -hmm. know. And then I. This is after I competed at Raw Nationals, and nothing against USAPL Raw Nationals. It's a great put together meet. But I saw the guys that were winning those meets, and then I saw the guys that were in the animal cage, and I'm like. Those guys are cooler. <laughs> uh, I don't kind of like hanging out with those guys. I think I want to go hang out with these guys. And that, that was it. It was like, they're just like me. So fuck it. Yeah. I'm going to do what I need to do to be with those guys. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. So yeah. seven years of lifting and training. Mm -hmm. and, and I, and I got, I got to like, a, it was, uh, I recorded a 14, a 1499 total, mm -hmm. uh, at 181 in the USAPL. So like it was, it was dedicated training. Like I, I hadn't max. I'm not gonna say I maxed out my genetic potential, but it, I was training with a purpose. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. For me, I started lifting. I don't know when I was like 13. I didn't start powerlifting till uh, 2016, so like five years ago. And I did my first. Um, so I actually ran college track. Then I went into uh, into powerlifting. I think it was probably 20, probably the end of 2017. Mm -hmm ish is probably when i started and it was actually just because i i got blood work done and my uh test level was super low so my one doctor prescribed me trt then i was like well this makes me feel good so <laughs> what is more gonna do you know and then you just yeah. kind of go down that rabbit hole of yeah of yeah what do you think are like reasonable amounts because like now it's all over the place because people you know to break world records they'll basically kind of take whatever they feel they need to they'll they'll get into like taking some taking a lot right um but then now with more trt out there we're hearing people having good results with like 100 milligrams and stuff like that um what have you found for yourself maybe that's been like a sweet spot you think of like feeling good and being able to still lift well um, I, I don't think you ever need to exceed, well, and this, this is all coming out of my ass because there is no dose, right? It's, 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 like it's, a so, loaded, it's a loaded question. So, right. Yeah. And it, it, it's always, it depends because for some people, uh, a very small dose can really throw you off, but you know, other people, they can take a ton and seem to get no side effects. So this is not, but I, I don't think you ever need to exceed like 800 milligrams total of everything on your, on your peak and definitely not a gram. I, I, mm -hmm. There's no reason to, I think. If you have everything else in your life, your whole lifestyle, your nutrition, and, and you're taking advantage of other PEDs as well, I don't think you ever need to go above that, or, or I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, and, and, I, and I, I can get behind that, but the reason I said it was a loaded question is because it's all dependent on like how sensitive, because uh, when I say sensitive to a substance, like so you think like, okay, sensitivity, you mean side effects, but it's not just side effects, it's the effects of the drugs. If you like the the another word that everyone likes to use or throw out there or a phrase is minimal effective dose. And whenever you hear minimal effective dose, you focus on the first word, minimal. You think like, okay, small, small, small stuff. But the key word of that little phrase is is not minimal, it's effective. Because if you can use the minimal effective dose, that means that you're still getting an effect. You're still getting the benefit while staying at a much more moderate dose than most people would would either recommend or would think to stay at uh, and still getting the most out of it while not inviting those serious side effects or health effects or like the, 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 the shit that you don't want. You know, you want to get the most out of it. And how do you get the most out of it? You allow those valleys, you come back down, you come off, you resensitize yourself through which at whatever means, whether it's pharmaceutical or supplementation or lifestyle changes or whatever, but you resensitize yourself. And like I was saying, because I'm, I, I don't, in the past years, I wouldn't like in probably like the last year or two, I haven't been running like as high of doses as I have because I was the guy that was pinning like a, a gram and a half of gear going into some competitions being an idiot because again, like I said, I didn't imagine myself being here for a long period of time. I was, I was in it to win and consequences be damned. But now I'm, I've been on much more moderate doses and I'm still getting the positive effects and I can still, I went and got blood work done after uh, this past showdown and everybody was like, Did, were you even on anything? And I'm like, yeah, I was on, I was on a good chunk of shit, but like, but I had put myself in a position where I was very resistant to the stress of those, uh, 
compounds that I added in. And I was very, I, I was, I was resilient. So I bounced back very, very quickly because I've implemented the strategies we've, we've talked about. What were the negative side effects of being on trend for a year? Was there some glaring things that stood out? Life in general, like it, it, the, well, because it, like it, it plays a role in like the, the dopamine in your brain. Like it was basically like just exacerbating the whole, like being high all the time, like high, not high as in like I'm, I'm fucked up all the time, but it was like I was up all the time. So even when I was relaxing and resting, I wasn't actually allowing myself to relax or rest. So it was like a constant state of that wired tired feeling. And, and, and trend alone specifically, it, it, it acts on your ACTH. It stimulates a whole bunch of cortisol and uh, which is going to affect your amygdala and the amygdala is a thing that gives you like the fear the you know flight or flight and so when that thing's stimulated all the time you start not feeling very well another thing it does is it it uh um upregulates your thyroid and so upregulated th thyroid hyperthyroidism anxiety you get a lot of anxiety off of that and so mm -hmm. a combination of a, a couple different avenues with trenbolone you start seeing you know people get those side effects did it mess with your pp not really. Mm. I hadn't really. Well, it was. Well, and Seema, by the way, he has a he has my penis pump in his car. Okay. Well, this I, is uh, actually legitimate. I <laughs> do have it. For this yeah. Well, well, think He's holding it for me. That's yeah. amazing. Send me a photo later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, not of the pump, not of not of the other thing. Oh. But, yeah, but, or both. I That's not as fun. Yeah, but, but um, but no. It, well, because like you, you guys don't give a fuck. I don't know. I keep trying to censor myself, but whatever. Don't. Yeah, but, like, but so like, think about it. Dopamine. It's a feel good hormone. Mm -hmm. What's that gonna do? Like, I, there wasn't any like dysfunction of the thing but i couldn't reach the mountaintop mm. reaching the mountaintop okay. was really really hard it was like <laughs> come on nobody come likes on. that god fucking and it's and then you're starting and then you're on trend so you can't fucking breathe and then you damn near pass out every time it's not a party so yeah it's it, it was it was hard to uh reach the summit so <laughs> you mentioned brain chemistry um of like and you know, they say that the brain for doesn't really finish developing until you're 25, right? Mm -hmm. So guys who are like t late teens or early 20s, right? What what do they need to be thinking about? Because that just seems like a bad cocktail of like shit to it, 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 it. Like, is there a way to do that safely before you finish developing? Um, no, I, I really don't think so. Um, and and maybe there's somebody out there that is that has figured that out, but especially trend balloon. No, I mean, uh, there, there's a reason, like, I, I wouldn't want my kids to, to start drinking when they're early, too, because, you know, it, it messes with that. And it's mm -hmm. the same with, with trend. Like, if you're going to start anything, you know, under 25, that's already probably not a good idea. There are other PEDs that you can use and take advantage of, but, but man, I, I don't think so. And maybe there's somebody more qualified that can, you know, say otherwise, but I, I don't think so. I don't mm -hmm. think you should start stuff before 25 i think that's scary i think that's irresponsible i don't think you're thinking about you know your future very well Power Project Family, how's it going? Now, you guys know that we have had so many individuals come onto this podcast, doctors, therapists, coaches, that have talked about the importance of getting your blood work done. Mark's done it, Andrew's done it, I've done it, and when we got our numbers back, and let me tell you that we didn't know what the fuck we were looking at. <laughs> That's why we partnered with Merrick Health, owned by More Plates, More Dates, Derek from More Plates, More Dates. And when you get your blood work done from Merrick Health, a patient care coordinator goes over your blood work and gives you an idea of the things you need to get done specifically for you. This is why they are the premium telehealth clinic to go to because they don't give you cookie cutter plans they give you plans that are specific to you your numbers and your blood work andrew how can people get it yes you guys got to head over to merrickhealth.com that's m-a-r-e-k health.com and if you are manually checking out you can use promo code power project 10 to save 10 percent off all of your labs but if you are interested in trt or hrt or something that you need uh, additional help with um, you're going to be speaking to somebody on the phone and with that you can still mention promo code power project 10 to save 10% off all of their recommended labs. Uh, again, that's at MerrickHealth.com. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. And you also mentioned things that weren't PEDs that guys can use. What what did you mean by that? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, they are PEDs, but they're non-anabolic. Non okay. Well, I should say non-androgenic. Mm -hmm. Because anabolic... What's the difference and, between androgenic and anabolic? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great question. So, when you have an anabolic androgenic steroid, it is... It, uh, very specifically working on your androgen receptor, right? And your androgen, well, I won't get into exactly how a steroid works and all its you know, transcription factors and whatever, but um, there are other things that can help you grow or help you lose fat or help you, you know. So one of those things, um, and one of the safest things you can do is uh, injectable carnitine. Injectable carnitine has a, a plethora of benefits. 
Um, it makes it, in, well, I won't get into all of it because I, I know I'll go into a big rabbit hole. But It helps you utilize energy better or something. Living, something along yeah, those yeah, lines, it, right? It actually and, makes yeah. your androgen receptor a little bit more, uh, what's, what's the word? Um, almost like magnetic. It, it makes Receptive. It a, Recept- yeah, it, it makes, makes the receptor it, more receptive. Yeah, yeah. And, and so you're getting a better bang for your buck that way. Um, in, in fact, wow. it sounds weird, but insulin is a great way to go too. If you're not a dumbass, <laughs> and don't don't use it without, you know, don't just go start using it. it. This, this isn't saying use insulin. Yeah, don't, like, yeah, yeah, that is not my, yeah. Tell them some about some of the dangers of insulin, by the way, because mm-hmm. like insulin, it. They, I've heard of some people that just did some fucked up shit. Well, yeah, you every, every, it. everybody's terrified of it because you hear the horror stories of people fucking up with it but mm-hmm. it like a very yeah. small mild dose of it you can you Go, can minimal effective dose minimal that's effective the thing dose. you don't have to take crazy crazy mm-hmm. amounts it's a if you can buy it over the counter at walmart is like and i know it's not that's not a good fucking benchmark but it's like <laughs> it's not it's it's not like it's not it's really like people have tried to commit suicide with insulin and have failed because it's it's your body has like it it is naturally produced by the body so like like for me and it's like again I'll put myself on blast because I like I'm simply using a fast acting insulin right now and I'm pinning two IU post workout that's that's a that's a baby dose and what that, does that help you do ba- basically helps with the shuttling of nutrients into uh, the stored energy, like stored energy or muscle building or tissue building in general. A, a good way to think of insulin is like the gatekeeper of your cells, right? Nothing comes in, nothing comes into your cell without insulin. It doesn't go in, right? And so using insulin can be very helpful to um, replenishing glycogen storage in your muscle or over, even oversaturating yourself with, with glycogen in that muscle tissue. Mm-hmm. Um, it is, it's like he said, very difficult to have uh, a, a big like damaging life-threatening effect with insulin you'd really have to do a lot so when we're talking mild doses one two i use a really good place to start you're not going to go hypo you're not going to have any kind of like weird seizure or something with it um it's a good place to start and and if you use correctly very very safe very effective um it can actually help you avoid diabetes a lot of people worry about if i take insulin is it going to be like test where i'm going to have to be dependent on an exogenous, an exogenous insulin, but it, it can actually work the other way where you actually can give your pancreas a break, especially when you've you've grown quite a bit and you have a lot of muscle tissue and that pancreas is working really hard. If you do take insulin, you need some carbohydrates mm-hmm. to accompany that though as well, right? Because yes. then you could get sick and right. pass yeah. out or, or even We're worse, right? Going, going hypoglycemic, but that that's exactly why a good place to start is one to two IU post-workout because what do you do post-workout? You go home, you shower, and you eat. Take it before you eat. And if you use fast acting insulin, then it's in and out of your system very, very quickly. So like that's why it's like I think I think it's irresponsible the amount of people that I hear that are like, Oh, it's dangerous. It's mm-hmm. gonna kill you. It's it's really you have to you have to really not know what you're doing. To, and that, and that, and people do that. Obviously, like I was that guy for a long time. Like I, I was like, it's gonna fucking kill you. I don't know. Like because I didn't know what I was doing. But like if you simply start at a very at a minimal effective dose, take it post workout when you're going to eat food already. All that it's going to do is increase the efficiency at which the food that you eat is used up by your body, mm-hmm. and it's going it's it's going to just make you recover better, potentially grow more tissue, uh, and just you utilize it's it's like car actually t- have uh, people use it pre-workout too which yeah, sounds yeah, that crazy too, yeah but you actually use a little bit pre-workout and you can actually learn faster um learn it's faster a, yeah it's kind Mo- of a motor learning so oh, like the wow. neuro, neural so like the yeah, yeah, nerve yeah. nerve in my tricep mm-hmm. how, how uh, explain it well i mean <laughs> it's a really long or, well the, like in yeah. But, but yeah no it's it, yeah it can just a little bit pre-workout and you really don't i've even had people do it uh with no carbohydrates in a fasted state, a little bit of growth hormone, a little carnitine, a little uh, uh, growth hormone. Um, you can use that all at once. It's a great fasted cardio, uh, you know, or, or a fasted training regimen. Um, you want to set that up. You don't want to just go start that tomorrow. Like you, yeah. you kind of want to yeah. set up some enzymes and some, you know, and some training before you do that. But uh, it can be very effective. And because yeah. and, like you guys were asking about like what I'm doing with my training, I'm starting, and I was like, oh yeah, it's fucking brutal. I'm killing myself. But it's it's brutal. It's brutal for a reason, and it's brutal in different ways. Because like I I will take insulin pre workout. Like I I take it I take it like pre workout and post workout. Sometimes I split the dose. It depends on the day. But on the upper body days, I'm taking it pre workout for the motor learning aspect. Because what does it do? It basically causes the bl- the blood glucose to dump 
at like drop, and then I pair that with my conditioning work to push the blood glute. Like basically, get rid of stored carbohydrates because carbs are stored as glucose and gl- or glucose in your bloodstream, glycogen in your muscles and your liver. And by doing the conditioning work first and the high repetition, high exertion for an extended period of time stuff first, I get I bypass that energy system. I use up or get rid of all of the stored energy as carbohydrates. So then when I move on to the actual pressing movements, all I am reliant on is the neurological aspect of strength, like the motor neuron firing and like the connection between my actual brain and the musculature. And that's, that's like that, that's what I credit with. Like, cause I never, I never thought to do this. I didn't know this was a pathway that I could do. Um, but that's a, it's, that is what is really a big factor in getting my tricep back is literally just building that neurological connection back, uh, with that musculature. It's pretty fascinating in terms of, of injury. Have you found other things to accompany this as well? Like, would it be beneficial to maybe, uh, introduce creatine or would it be beneficial to, are you guys maybe potentially also using, um, some peptides and things of that nature or other types of pharmacology to uh, help this nerve issue along. Yeah, one of them is actually injectable ATP, which sounds like a lot of people don't even realize you can inject that, right? But wow. ATP, adenosine triphosphate, um, it's it's the energy that your muscle actually uses. So when you're eating fats, you're eating sugar, you're eating whatever, everything ends up coming down to uh, ATP for the muscle, right? And so one thing that we do actually is use a little bit of ATP because he's not going to have any energy left, right? There's no glucose left or very minimal because it's very short rest time. He doesn't have time for oxygen to come in and, and, and go through all that, you know, the oxidative pathway. So he's, you know, creating energy through that pathway. But we have injected ATP. There is energy left for him to move, right? He, he might feel hungry. He might feel whatever. Um, all that blood sugar is really low, but he can still contract that muscle because there is... ATP that we have injected before uh, on a on a cellular level, like it's 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 su- it's such a like everybody hears like mitochondria is the power as the powerhouse uh-huh. of the cell. Everybody remembers that from grade school, yeah. but that's ATP is that it's that gas gas in the gas tank. So you if you actually use that, and that's another PED. It's 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 an external aid, but it's not uh, not. Uh, androgenic, but I'm using it to basically be able to push into that like that grinding area of of contraction where it's like the the slow last rep. Like you do do like a set of twelve, and like the on ten it's slow, and you're like fuck, okay, this sucks, and then one more, and you're got it, and then okay, breathe, 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 okay, one more, and you finally that building it's, that it's there, but you really have to dig deep. And so for yeah. for him, yeah, but yeah, and then we actually have this special concoction made of. Of ATP and AMP, and if you don't know, AMP is the basically a, a burned out ATP that needs to be remade, right? And so we actually inject him with AMP and ATP, and the AMP is four times. There's four times more AMP than there is ATP, and this signals to the brain that he's already in a fatigue state, right? Because when there's this much AMP out, it signals like, oh, he's gone through a lot of training already. So it signals uh, a very specific enzyme to be released called AMPK. And so when we have this enzyme here, it helps build even more ATP very, very rapidly. And we've already signaled it before he started his workout. So by the time he's getting there, there's plenty of ATP. There's plenty of free energy for him to do this. And we really get to build that neurological side of his training. Mm-hmm. Have these methods being utilized uh, in other sports? Are you guys aware? Like, yeah. Have you heard, heard of other people? Because it sounds like you would be able to get past even some drug testing with the uh, things that you guys are... I don't want to mention names, but yes, it is. It's actually really popular. The The AMP and the ATP um, concoction, that's really popular actually in, in, in uh, professional bicycling. Mm. Um, and, a, and a lot of actually yeah, like... Fair. Yeah, and, 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 and yeah. I don't want to... I won't throw out names, but like CrossFit, really popular as well, right? Like you, It's almost like if, if you're, you're mentally there... Um, you can just keep pushing yourself. You know there's stuff there to to be utilized. You, but yeah, there there are a lot of these kind of drugs or PEDs that you can't test for. So mm-hmm. they're, I mean, they're absolutely being used in probably just about every sport. Yeah, because what L carnitine is an amino acid, isn't it? Or I'm, some something like that. I don't know, but yeah, yeah like you, it's it's never na- heard it's nat- of injectable carnitine. It's nat- it's, it's naturally occurring in in meat. the human body. You can't, yes, yeah, yep. meat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. You, you can't test yeah. for that. How are you going to yeah. test yeah. for? So then can you have too much and take it for too long? 
Carnitine specifically? Just these injectable, like the ATP, oh, and the AMP. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. You'll, you, ATP, yeah, yeah. If you, you take ag- too much. Again, dose dependent, you can kill yourself. Yeah. Because like ATP is cellular energy. So Everyone like. Everyone remember this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Disclaimer. Like don't just fuck it. No more is not better. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. you're going to have a hard time finding injectable ATP anyway. Like, yeah. Good luck. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you will give yourself a heart attack if yeah. you take too much ATP and yeah. it would be a very large dose. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, I mean, you absolutely can. Yeah. yeah. Cause it, it just, it causes like muscular contractions. It's, it's the powerhouse. It, it makes the powerhouse of the cell be the powerhouse of the cell. So if you fucking over, if you oversaturate it, you. It's like, free energy. It yeah, will be used. It's going to be used. It's going to be used yeah. somehow. So and if you're not doing anything or doing enough to utilize it, it's gonna just get after bur- it's gonna have to get burnt off somehow and then you're just gonna the heart's gonna beat like crazy and that you can run into really bad territory yeah don't it, yeah. I mean, it's not like recreational yeah, don't take not, it just yeah. sit there and like yeah, yeah this is, this is, and that, that's the thing it's the philosophy of training in life we're doing it for a reason don't just be like oh yeah it's gonna help me push harder i'm gonna mm-hmm. fucking take it don't be that guy you'll, another, you'll fuck yourself up yeah and then the the one, another thing that we use for him specifically hopefully you're okay with me talking about this dude I, again I, put me on blast i don't care cool is yeah. in, injectable choline mm-hmm. i don't know if you i want to bring that up yeah, yeah so th- so the yeah. carnitine the choline atp and a- amp are all in this concoction that we had made um specifically mostly for him mm-hmm. and now we've found a lot of different ways to utilize this but that that choline is also helping with it, it's a big part of your your contracting as well and so this combination is basically giving him, and the carnitine actually facilitates the choline to 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 break that blood barrier. Question, isn't choline also just like a pill supplement? Like absolutely, it's yeah. in eggs. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So like yep. alpha GPC is a mm-hmm. form of like oral choline. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely true. But if you inject it, you get to time it. This is exactly when it's going to come into play. And because it, whenever you inject anything, it 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 hits the bloodstream faster. So if I take it at a specific time, which is pre-workout, mm-hmm. it's going to, like Jake said, the L-carnitine, the choline is going to work synergistically with one another paired with the ATP and the AMP to let me gr- push into that, that gritty grinding neurological strength zone uh, paired with the carnitine and choline doing the same thing. So it's like this doing everything with a reason to put me in the perfect position to rebuild that neurological connection. Is this a uh, was this a bodybuilding drug? I thought I think I remember there was like B twelve or a B vitamin and choline and carnitine. Oh, Mike, it's in Mike, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, oh, no. yeah, 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 yeah. Like it's I mean, that's from like it's from a kind mm-hmm. of a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yep. No, you're absolutely right. It's actually used as a, a fat burner. Usually, it's in a concoction for a fat burner. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've seen it thrown in with uh, what's it called that uh, that fat burner one that you have. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, the, like the super, sh- the super shredder. Shit? Yeah, the super yeah. shredder. I don't remember what's all in mm. that, but yeah, it's a very yeah. common like fat loss thing. Well, because like because L, it's par- yeah, like L carnitine. What is it? What is it? It helps mobilize fatty acids. So so like if you're in, if you're in a, it doesn't like burn fat more or doesn't burn more fat, but it helps you like it helps your caloric deficit. Like you have to be in a caloric deficit, but it just. Enhances the bodily processes, like you said earlier. It just facilitates fat loss more efficiently. Specifically, beta oxidation doesn't happen without L-carnitine. Yeah. L-carnitine needs to be saturated in the cell for that to happen. So, mm-hmm. yeah, and then increases that, the the efficiency of how you utilize calories. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, yes, yeah. that's yeah. a great way. Or, or or remove calories. Right. Yeah. So ATP, uh, choline, and then you said another one. AMP, AMP, AMP and oh. L-carnitine. Those. Well, I don't know about uh, AMP, but those are all. Legal, super easy to get uh, oral supplements. Do those just not work? I mean, I know injecting is a different level, but I'm just saying like in general, like somebody's listening and they're not trying to inject anything, but can they take those orally and will they get anything out of it or does it have to travel like straight into the bloodstream? So for carnitine, um, carnitine has been studied like crazy. You can go on to just about any like PubMed, NIH, whatever. and and research it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and oral carnitine has pretty much been deemed ineffective useless right wow but injectable and so a lot of people see these studies they say l-carnitine doesn't do anything you guys are not right but if you look at only studies with injectable l-carnitine it's crazy um very effective they they started to use it for diabetics really effective for diabetics um but but yeah to answer your question no not very effective unless Mm -hmm. injected atp especially uh, yeah and 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 that's kind of the thing again because it's it we're always i'm at least me because i'm the 
one of like we're both the philosophical weirdo but it's like i it uh, it always comes back to like why why like if you're if if you're like i want to be the best in the world i want to be the best in the world but i'm going to compete in this natural federation so i can't inject but i want to take these orally and it's like well what's the difference there like you need you need to really like turn around and have a conversation with yourself because like okay well why why is it okay for a diabetic to take insulin why 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 is that okay is is that more natural than someone who isn't mm. it it's it's you have to be able to like give an actual valid answer as to like okay i'm t- i'm okay with taking this orally and then you could branch out you could build on that because like the sarm conversation mm-hmm. like sarms are legal or like legal ish they're like gray area whatever like osterine uh fucking all that shit and legal to own, not to use legal <laughs> not for human consumption or whatever it's nobody weird. fucking knows it's a weird but but that's the thing like there, there are kids in high school that are taking all of these over-the-counter uh, SARMs or pro, not pro-hormones, but that was like back in my day. Like I, I remember Epistain. Like that shit was fucking poison, but goddamn, did I look good when I took it? <laughs> what is Epistain? <laughs> it's a, it's a pro-hormone. It's basically like a designer steroid. They figured out that if they attached a different, like, like a, like an additional carbon group or something to a steroid compound, you could take it orally, and it was because it was slightly different, it was deemed to be legal. But it's like, okay, it's legal. So does that make it more okay? Is that more natural? No, mm-hmm. hell no. Like it, even birth control, like hormonal birth control for women, that's hormonal. Yeah, it, yeah. it's still so. It's like have actually like turning it around and having like a conversation with yourself and being like, okay, I'm okay with taking it if I take it in a pill, but I'm not okay with injecting it. It's like, but why? Really, really ask yourself why. And if you can't give a good answer to that, then you need to reevaluate the way that you're looking at things. And in my opinion, and some people will disagree with me because it's, there's some people have like weird morals or whatever, but you can go even further because like, what are morals? Like, why is that more okay than this? Why is that worse than that? You know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I'm fascinated by this strategy. (laughs) Um, Do you think it could help with like other types of injuries? This is, you know, this is, uh, for Joe specifically because he has a nerve issue. Mm -hmm. But someone like Andrew, he's dealt with uh, kind of chronic back pain most of his life. Is there some sort of recipe that you kind of would conjure up for something like that as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's kind of what I do is, is, I mean, under, under market or underground a little bit, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's always, there's always something um, that you can do. And again, I think it like, to go full circle, it all kind of comes back to caring, right? Because there's always something. Like, if there's pain, why is there pain? What is happening that is causing pain? Like, what? Wh- why is there a chronic pain, and how how do we block that off, right? Mm-hmm. Or 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 fix the issue in the first place instead of just oh, here's your pain kill. Sorry, you're hurting, right? Mm-hmm. Like, there's there's always there's always something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, we um actually before we even get to that. You mentioned the philosophy of training multiple times. I know you've, you've, you've touched on it. Like, why are you doing X? Why are you doing? Why are you doing this? Right? Um, but what exactly? When when did you guys start thinking of this idea? And what exactly is it? Like, uh, for both of you, what exactly is that? In in terms of like the philosophy of training, yeah, or, like because yeah. is it just in general the philosophy of training? Because it seems like there's something else that you guys have conjured up with what you're talking about here as far as this philosophy. Yeah, like it, I'll, I'll kind of kickstart yeah. that at least, but but basically, like all all forms of training is philosophical, right? Like there is a there is a hard line between science and philosophy. So when like so, I always have a hard time when people are like, oh my. My uh, my coaching or whatever my methods are scientifically backed, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of the times that, that, that's not true because there's so much that anything that science has to be tangible and it has to be able to show like this is a result, right? Like th- we've we've been we've shown that this is a tangible thing. Mm-hmm. Um, there are results, there are numbers. It's 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 true, right? But anytime that you start training, when you say like you're gonna you build a protocol and you say this, it becomes philosophical because. There is nothing that can back that up and say this is going to be effective, right? And so our our idea is it's we we gather as much information as possible, as much truth. Everything we want is built off of truth, right? Like we know ATP, we know what ATP does in the body. We know what L-carnitine does in the body. We know what you know growth hormone or insulin does in the body. There's there's plenty of science to prove that, right? Those are our facts. And now what we're doing is is trying to apply that that but but that becomes philosophical right that becomes this is my best bet and we're trying to build it our whole idea is 
we're trying to turn this into a science experiment, right? Like we we build this out. We say this is our experiment. This is our hypothesis. Like just like you're in eighth grade and you know building out your your first science experiment. This is what we think we're going to get out of it. Mm-hmm. But everything has to have a result. Like what can we say? Like that 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 will that will prove that this is working. And then now that starts to become more more scientific than philosophical, right? And so everything is why. But we, we have to, it has to be planned. It has to be planned. There has to be something that is a result that can go back and say, we are on the right track. We can't just say like, oh, you know, um, I want to get bigger. So uh, the internet says a hypertrophy is like 10 to, or eight to 12 reps or something, right? Like that's how you get bigger. Is mm-hmm. that the only way to get bigger? Or are you just doing that, right? Mm-hmm. And so everything just has to have a reason. And so even if you go through and do that, that sets of 12 or whatever, maybe you do sets of 12 for, I don't know, eight weeks, are you getting bigger? Mm-hmm. Like, and you can measure that, right? You can measure your arms and say, am I getting bigger or, or whatever, but everything has to have, you know, you, you have to be able to track. It has to be a science experiment or it's worthless, basically. Like there's always a why. And, and, and that right there is kind of why, like, at least for me, and I don't want to speak for Jake, but like, I, I'm not, I'm cautious in being like, okay, this is absolutely what we're doing and this is what's going to happen mm-hmm. because it's all philosophy. It's all hypothetical until it actually comes to fruition and like part of that is is me doing it in the application but it's also like you because everything is so dose dependent individually based and whatnot uh we don't know if we like it because it was like okay we're going to approach this style of training after the show and we're going to do this and this is what we're hoping to see at the end of eight to twelve weeks and it Mm. is indeed what we're seeing right now but if that wasn't the case, then all that means is that philosophy or that hypothesis was a little off. So we need we take the data, we take what happened, what actually we did observe, and then we bring that in and we're like, okay, why did that happen? Right. If that happened, then this might be a better route. Or if that happened, then we shouldn't do this. All it is 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 data. It's it's looking at like we were talking to Ryan earlier, it's not it's there's no secret method. There's no secret tactic or or, or plan or secret uh, 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 compound to take like the, what we're talking about. That's specifically made for me. Mm-hmm. It's all about figuring out what works in that certain situation and approaching each situation that you're in, whether it's your own personal one or someone that you're coaching or consulting with or just a friend. But realizing that each situation is different, and as long as you approach it with a thoughtful and open mind and look for the answers, look for the whys, not just what is, then by doing that, it's going to put you in a better position to actually achieve what it is that you want. Yeah, and and everybody basically has their own truth, right? Like what is true for him is not true for me. And so we're all kind of trying to figure out our own truths. Like whatever John Hack is doing and whatever John Hack's taking – you know, it works for him, but that doesn't mean that that's going to be true for me, right? And I don't have the same genes that John Hack does. He doesn't have the same genes that I do and, and, and whatever, right? And so we take all this all this data that we can, all the science that we can and say, um, this is my best bet. Like, that we are hoping for this outcome. Is it true or is it not? And as we do that, we can we can kind of find our own truths for ourselves. Yep. And and just like blood work, the more the the longer you observe it, the more data you compile, and the more time like the more time you spend paying attention to it mm-hmm. and understanding the whys, the better uh, the better base you're going to have to make decisions to put you w- closer to what you want in the future. Because you're going to be like, okay, well this happened when this happened. Now we need to do this. Okay, I if I if I do this. This, I can expect this to co- to occur because this is what happened the other two times we added this in or whatever. So mm-hmm. right, but yeah. if it doesn't work, you have to be able to to be like, hey, that that didn't work. I, I mm-hmm. thought it was going to work. You know, we we put our best, we put our mind together. We thought this was going to work, but if we weren't getting the result right now, we, we'd stop and say, okay, well, what did we miss? Right? Mm-hmm. Why did this not? Give us the outcome we thought, and and that again, I know it. Both of us were the same person. We keep going on tangents, but it's like, but it's but it's with it's it's with Hunter, like record breakers. She had a PR performance. She Hunter Henderson uh, PR performance kicked ass. Had a great day. She's like, oh, I had a shitty day or whatever. She still went seven for nine, won the meet, won ten thousand dollars. But it what it wasn't even near her top end potential. There is so much untapped 
room there and all that was it was real we called it a warm-up meet going into it mm-hmm. because now we know okay this worked well okay this didn't do exactly what we wanted so now we can take all of that data and we can take that experience and then apply it to the next one to push her or put her in a position to end up a little bit higher next time a little bit higher next time right like her last six weeks are not going to be like her next six weeks it'll be very yes. very different yep yeah, having your why uh, intact is really helpful. And then plus with you guys being coaches, when you when somebody says, hey, I'm not really, you know, getting the results and, you know, here's what last week kind of yielded and you start to go over stuff and they're like, oh, yeah, well, I hate that exercise. I hate that exercise and I hate that one too. And I haven't been doing them. And then you can say, hey, remember, we wrote down your why. It's right here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is why you want to do these things. Remember, you are coming off a knee injury we need your knee to be healthier for these squats, and this is why we're approaching all this this way. Then it just falls in line, and the person can make a decision. Or if if it's you that that you're questioning, you know, throwing questions at yourself, you can just kind of review in your head how bad do you want to do this? Right. You know, is mm-hmm. it about how bad you want to do it? Do you actually want to do it, or do you want to just say you want to do it and do half the amount of work? Because that can get you some results, but it won't get you all the results you're looking for. Absolutely. Yep. When it comes to yes, when it comes to um, working with people and um, suggesting certain things that they should use uh how how do you guys do that like what do you need to be able to help somebody do that safely because i mean you hear of like some coaches uh, i've heard of people say hey try this or do this or do this and people end up in real deep shit right Mm -hmm. um so how do you guys navigate those waters in a safe manner with every individual that comes your way? I think it comes back down to that minimal effective dose, right? You always start with something small. And you also mm-hmm. have to realize like there is no safe way. There's no absolute safe way to do something, right? Mm-hmm. And so you always start with the, the minimal that you possibly can. And you, you're looking for those sides. Like if you're taking this or you're, or you're doing this kind of thing or whatever, you have to understand like what are the first sides that would show up, right? And you're being very communicative with them saying like, are, are we getting this? Are you feeling this way? And the first thing you see, it's like, okay, that, you know, we, we got to bring this back down or, oh, this is going really well. We're not, you know, let, let's bump it up a little bit mm-hmm. or, or whatever. But it, there is no like absolute safe way to do anything. Yeah. And and it, it but it but it really does boil down to that communication and care, and I just want to add to that it's also collaborative effort because like there are so many coaches out there that are like this this is my camp this is the way that I do things and they can do they can those coaches aren't doing I would say like they're not doing it min- maliciously, uh, but they're they're pigeonholing themselves because they're only allowing their knowledge base to be the base of knowledge that is there. Like I am super grateful to have Jake and to have David Herrera, who is the other, the other host on our podcast, uh, because I, I, I'm, I believe in collaboration. I believe in working together because Jake complements my knowledge base because he has knowledge that I don't have. And like you said earlier, I compliment your own because I have knowledge that you don't have. And it's, it's, sometimes it's not even knowledge. Sometimes it's the way the, in the application or in the, in the way of, uh, explanation, like, but it's not being afraid to like looking at a client and being like, Hey, okay. Like, this is what I thought was going to happen. This is what is happening. I'm not sure what's going on, or I'm not confident in like my ability to assess this situation. Let's go talk to this person, or maybe I can send you to this person to talk to them, and then they can come to me and communicate with me. Like I had, for an example, I had a client go to uh, one of the train your ass off things with Dave Tate, and Dave reached out to me, and he's like, "Hey, this is what I saw with her. This is what she needs to work on." And I'm like, "Sick. That's that's in the same vein of what I was thinking, but shit, I wasn't there, so I didn't." see that fuck yeah that's awesome that gives me insight into what i need to apply in the future and because it's it's putting yourself in a position where uh it's it's the whole like and i mean I, again philosophy but like I, it's abundancy versus scarcity mindset we can't be afraid to work with one another and bounce ideas off of one another because the rising tide raises all ships like Absolutely. we all end up better off what are some of your like life philosophies nowadays um sounds like you grew up um making some decisions that led you to uh, utilize cocaine and some other drugs that you mentioned. I don't know how addicted or how caught up you got in those. You did mention attempting suicide. How have you kind of like come out of that? And it seemed, you seem like you're doing really well now and seem like you are making a great life for yourself and you seem happy. Like mm-hmm. just stuff that I follow on Instagram and some of the things I see from you, it looks like things are going pretty well. So 
what's the difference between when you were 17 and maybe hurting and wanting to maybe potentially hurt yourself or harm yourself in some way? What are some of the differences and what are some of the things that you uh, live by now that have kind of helped you through that? Well, so it's like we're, Words are just words until they're not. So, like, I, I got this, te- and speaking of Dave, like, I brought him up earlier. I, got, I don't know, we're recording. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming we're recording. But, like, it's live, learn, pass on is on my forearm. That's the motto of Elite FTS. I used to work for Elite FTS. I was with them for a long time. I'm not affiliated with them anymore, but I have an, a, an extreme respect for everything Dave has built. Uh, and I live by those words. I got that tattoo in 2000. 16 I think and I was I was trending upwards because like when I when I was a kid I just didn't I didn't know how to manage myself I didn't know how to manage all the pain I felt I had uh like poverty coming up like my mom was super sick my dad was never there my dad my dad's an amazing support system like but he had to work like three or four jobs continuously to make sure that I had food on the table, you know, like it was just one of those situations. And it was, I looked at it like I was a burden, like I, I didn't want to be there. And then paired with teenage angst and just being a little psychopath wrestler kid, like I, it, it let me fall down into a really, really bad place. Um, and I like, I, I'm a big proponent of therapy. I've been, I've been in therapy consistently for like the past four years. Um, and it's, it's that like that in addition to a lot of other stuff has saved my life or whatever, but it's, it just, all it comes down to is managing the shit that you have. Like we're all, I hate the whole like mindset of like, we're all broken. It's the Island of misfit toys or whatever. Like we're all fucked up cause we power lift and we do, it's like, ah, oh, it takes yeah. a fucked up individual. No. Everybody has trauma. Everybody has issues that they deal with. And that's not, it's not good, but it's not bad either. It's that blah, it's that, it's that space that we have to be okay with. And it's as soon as you start working with it and not against it, you're going to be in a much better spot. Cause it's like, I know that I have depressive episodes. I know that I struggle with anxiety and I don't like, I don't, I'm not caught off guard by it anymore. I'm not like, fuck, God damn it, I, it's happening again. Like, and then I break down. It's like, it's just about finding strategies to basically look at my partner who, again, I'm incredibly grateful for her because that, like, she's a big factor here. But like, I'll look at her and be like, hey, I'm off today. I'm not having a great day. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I don't know what I need. I, I'm, I might get pissed at you. Like, I literally can't tell you why I'm feeling the way that I am, but I'm letting you know that like, I feel this way today and I would, I would appreciate it if we work together to get past this rather than me trying to shut it down and work against it and shut it up. Let's approach it as a unit and, and do this together. And so, sometimes it's as simple as me saying like, God damn, I, it's a fucking bad day. Like, why the fuck am I pissed off? Why am I so irritable? Mm-hmm. You know, why am I so fucking sad today? You know, and then just talking about it and I'm like, Oh, I just need to get that out. You know, sometimes it's as simple as that. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it sticks around for a long time, but it's it's working with it, not against it, and understanding that none of us are broken, but we're all individual. We're all different. We all have different brains. We all have different experiences, and we all, like, all of every one of our truths are different. Your reality is different than my reality. Yours is different. Mine is different, whatever. But it's all about our perception and how we feel and working with it, not against it. What's like a real life uh, coping mechanism that you might use? Like, is it helpful to uh, watch a certain TV program or listen to certain type of music or like go on a walk? Like, I don't know what's reasonable because I think a lot of times people are really uh, crippled by their depression and they mm-hmm. don't have the, or at least they don't feel like they have the energy to even like leave the house, get up off the mm-hmm. couch type of thing. So two two things two things that I use and it was right at the beginning is I love uh, cooking shows. Like if you if you have Netflix, watch somebody feed Phil because it's like Never this. Ha- it's dude. It's this happy like it, it's Phil Rosenthal, I think his name, but he's just like this happy old Jewish dude that like it's like a travel show and he just eats food and he's like so pleasant and that's like my decompress show. Like I'll just rewatch it and it makes me so happy because mm-hmm. he's just. It's like I'm just hanging out with this dude and I'm like yeah, like that food looks good. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, it just yeah. makes me. It's stupid and happy, but like. Dealing with anxiety and whatnot, it's music. Like, I never thought that, because I I think so fast, I think too much, and, like, when, like, that's where the anxiety comes from. I, like, think, I, like, we're driving over here, and I'm thinking of worst-case scenario. It's immediately, like, man, you know, we could get in a car crash on the way over here. We could all die. You know, like, I could do everything right with this, and then, like, I could have a brain aneurysm. You don't know. You know, and it's, like, that, that crazy level of shit, but I need 
I need like to occupy my time. So I found a really, really effective way to do that is I'll put one AirPod in and I'll literally just listen to music all day. Even when I'm having conversations, like I've recorded our podcast listening to music, like, and it's instrumentals. No, no lyrics. It's, it's, I don't understand. Like, I don't understand how theory. He has two different brains in there. It honestly might be, but like, I'll be singing along to a song in my head while I'll be speaking like a different sentence. It's very odd. I don't, it's, it's uh, apparently that's like really abnormal and like people can't do that, but like I do that, but like, I'm cause I'll talk to, I'll be like making food in the kitchen and I'm like talking to Brie and I'm like, yeah, okay. So we got to walk the dog today. And I'm like, Oh, I fucking love this song. And like, she's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I'm like, Oh, sorry. It's the new album. And it's just like it, I think so fast yeah. that occupying a part of my focus helps me focus elsewhere. Cause it like, it, it basically like, it pulls a, uh, like the gas. The gas tank is too big, okay. so it like gets rid of some of it. And Joe, like, you're not yeah. crazy, by the way. Yeah, no, it just I'm just, just so different. You know, just, just a little. Different. Well, I'm, if you think about it, people go to like coffee shops and stuff, and they mm -hmm. go there to work. Mm -hmm. And you would think, well, working at a coffee shop it sounds distracting. Like, why don't mm -hmm. just why wouldn't you just work at home? There's no one there. There's no mm -hmm. noise. But people need that ambient. A lot of people do. Not everybody, but a lot of people need that ambient noise. They need a little bit of foot traffic. They need to like. Uh, I don't know, just have some energy around, have mm -hmm. some other people around. It kind of reminds me of training as well. I mean, training with yeah. no music kind of feels like torture sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, for myself personally, it's been really helpful to put on some sort of nostalgic type music, you know, put on something old that you know that you like, especially if you're in like a frustrated state, because if you're trying to like catch the beats of something new, like trying to get into the rhythm of it or trying to enjoy it, can be annoying because you're not mm -hmm. used to that particular song. So maybe pull out something that you know that's going to work well for you. Like you said with that uh, that type of show that you were mm -hmm. watching, the cooking show. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You recently got on TikTok, and an interesting thing about that platform is that honestly, I've noticed that a lot of people believe they have ADHD, and a yeah. lot of people truly do. Um, but I would assume, like we had Andrew Huberman on and Anna Lemke on, and both of them kind of were also mentioning there's a lot of like misdiagnosed ADHD mm -hmm. going on like self-diagnosed that's mm -hmm. misdiagnosed right you definitely do and definitely like have so like for I guess I'm wondering what would you like what would your advice to be to individuals that are like I definitely have ADHD I can't pay attention to shit like how sh where should what should they figure out how do they deal with that dopamine because it's all dopamine hits mm -hmm. like uh, TikTok is like the fastest moving fucking social media platform. I don't look at it. I, I can't look at it it's because dangerous. like it eats, it eats your fucking existence. Mm -hmm. Like I, I bitch at Briani. This is, this is one of the things that I bitch at her for. Cause mm -hmm. she'll like fall into her phone. And then like two hours later, she's like, Oh my God, I watched like a billion TikToks. And I'm like, you have been sitting there and like, haven't spoken for an hour and a half. But like, it's it every time you like see a little funny thing, it's a little dopamine hit. It's a little dopamine hit. It's a little dopamine hit. And then what happens when you keep hitting those highs, the highs become the normal. So then when you remove it, you're, you're not, you're not back to normal. You're in low now. You're like in a deficient state. So then you're like, fuck, I don't know what to do with myself. And then it's like, I need to, I can't focus on anything because you're literally training your brain every day to not focus on anything. And that's why there's value to limiting screen time. Like, uh, one of the things, cause I, I doubt she's going to listen to this, but like Hunter's on her phone way too much. <laughs> like literally in between, like in between squat attempts, she's like scrolling Instagram. And I was mm -hmm. like, I'm going to punch you in the fucking back of the head. Like what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? Because it's like focus, God damn it. But yeah. like, that's the thing. Some people think that that's them focusing or they're like they're like well i need to wind down so i'm not like i don't want to think about the meat all the time but it's not it's 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 not actual like it's that wired tired zone you're not actually resting and like bringing yourself back down because you're still getting the little dopamine hit the little dopamine hit the little dopamine hit so it's not really i i don't it's like the self-diagnosed adhd right. but it's 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 dopamine reliance it's it's like you need you need to get these little oh oh yeah cool ha 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 every every fucking moment of every day and you're not appreciating the space that that just empty time the blah time you know people don't people don't like that people don't have that these days people freak out i mean like one of the things that can make people freak out the most is just to put them in a dark room yeah you put someone in a pitch black room for like two hours or something and you'll you'll lose you feel like you're losing your mind mm -hmm. i know that 
um, Aubrey Marcus and other people have talked mm-hmm. about doing these practices where they're in a room like that for like Float 16 tent, hours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and they have like the most crazy uh, like psychedelic experience uh, of their life just from being in a dark room. It's pretty wild. Mm-hmm. You messed around with some psychedelics and stuff as well. Have any of those things been helpful uh, to helping you um, kind of like live a better life nowadays than what you uh, grew up with? A- ab- absolutely. And that's like, I, I am a big believer in psilocybin, uh, which is magic mushrooms. Uh, and uh, both both in like larger doses and smaller doses, I, I microdose every day. And and the best way that I can describe that, and like, my, so a normal, like let's, a normal dose is like one gram. I take like normal, I take 100 milligrams, which is, it's basically the equivalent of like, it, it's like a cup of coffee. Like it's not psycho, it's not psychoactive. I'm not like, oh, I'm tripping every day, but it just, it's like a little, a little something. There's, there's just something there, but the, it's such a low dose that it doesn't like, it doesn't alter my experience or my reality, but the way that I describe it for me, and it's all based on the individual. Again, like have a why for what you're doing. Don't just go fucking, okay, Joe said to do fucking magic, magic mushrooms, go do magic mushrooms. But it helps me compartmentalize. Whereas like when I said earlier, like I'll wake up and I'll have like, I'll have a shit, I'll just wake up and be pissed off. I'll wake up and be like depressed. I, and I'm like, I don't know why this is the way that it is right now. In the past, when I wasn't implementing these strategies, I would be, I, I'd, I'd let that bleed into other aspects of my life. I couldn't like separate it from myself. I couldn't just be like, okay, this is, this is the state of things right now. This isn't like what I am. It would, I'd be like, okay, I'm pissed off today. So fuck you. Fuck you. Like, I'm going to do this. I don't give a fuck about myself. I'm going to go to the gym and fucking drive myself into the ground. Fuck it. You know, like I literally for in like for a year, I had a, I kept putting a hashtag that was like team fuck it because like I was just like, fuck it. If I'm if I'm I'm going to squat this weight, if I live or die, fuck it. Like we're just going to find out, you know, that was my whole approach because I couldn't compartmentalize. I couldn't separate myself from my emotions or my like re- reactionary type shit. Microdosing psilocybin for me helps me do that. It helps me be like, OK, when I'm up, I need to be up. But that's not me. When I'm down, I need to be down, but that's not me. That's not me as an individual. That's not me as a psyche. That's just a part of me. It, it helped me identify that like my, I am not my feelings. I am not my reactions to situation, mm-hmm. situations. I am, I'm just me and all of these things are separate. It helped me deal with them, compartmentalize them, identify them and just work with them rather than against them. Like we were talking about earlier. Was this with your first experience of psilocybin or did you slow, like, was this through microdosing that that helped? I mean, it must be a culmination of therapy, psilocybin, Mm -hmm. et cetera. But like, when did you, like, when was the last time, I I wouldn't say when was the last time, but when was like the last period where you were super reactionary, where you were in that and aware that you're in that. I mean, I still struggle with it. Yeah. Like, I mean, I mean, shit, dude. Like, we we're all on Instagram. Uh-huh. We all get it. Like, I mean, and you guys, you guys are like, it's the whole like you've built a brand and whatnot. But people still like, I mean, people look at you, and you used to be the big power lifter guy, and now you're more like it. it the way everything trends, we're talking about lifestyles and like building brands, and like, okay, it's like we've built a business off social media, and people are like, well, oh, Mark Bell sold out, blah blah blah. It's like, no, he's bought in. He's fu- he's he's done what he's supposed to do. He's he's winning at this shit. Uh, but the thing about it is like, I, I'd lie to you if I said like some people that like look at me and they're like, oh, Joe, Joe's never going to bench again. He's never going to deadlift again. He's, he's fucking washed up. He's mm-hmm. done. I'd lie to you if I said that didn't bother me. Cause I I'd said earlier, I'm powered by spite half the time. Like, cause fuck those guys. But, yeah. but I say that jokingly mm-hmm. ha- halfway, like there's a, there is truth to it, mm-hmm. but that's just part of how I feel. It's part of my feeling. It's part of my reaction to it. And I identify it and I'm there. Cause like they're like people, people talk shit. The internet gives everyone a voice. Sometimes people are more willing to use that voice when they probably shouldn't be. But like it, it bothers everybody. Even, even if like you can detach yourself from it entirely, it's always going to be a little blip of negative. And that, and that's another thing that this has really helped me with because it's like the bigger you get, the more people are going to talk about you and, and you have to be able to compartmentalize and be like, well, that's fine. If that makes them happy, that's cool. You know, I'm still doing my thing. It, it's fine. So yeah. That. Free, and I, I'm curious about this with both of you guys. Um, Cause the other, the other day we were all talking about like sharing your emotions with, you know, your significant other and how sometimes men have an issue with that. And you mentioned that you're able to share certain things with Brianna and 
I'm wondering, were you like, I don't know how long you guys have been together, but is that something that you were comfortable doing? And was it easy for you to share the way you were feeling about certain things with your partner? Or did you have to learn how to do that as a man? And this, this goes to you too. If like you have any insight on this with you and your wife, Kiara or Mm -hmm. wife. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm um, with, with Kiara and I was actually like our, uh, our first date that I was like, so I had just come from a previous relationship where I was about to be married, right? And we we cut off our marriage like five days before because of some, you know, things that happened. And so I was in a very non-trusting, like, you know, don't, I, don't, I just don't care. I don't care today. I don't care whatever. And then so Kiara and I on our first, first date, I'm like, this is how I am. This is all the things that, you know, have happened to me. This is, and she was like, cool. And then, you know, then she talked about all her stuff and then we got it out on our, our first day. And so, no, I guess it wasn't, it wasn't very hard. I'm, I'm pretty good at just like, this is how I am. Um, you know, if it's, if it's a big deal, then, then that's cool. If it's not, then cool, you know? So I, I guess not. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm kind of the similar way. And I think because like Jake, you put that, the whole like cutting off the thing, it's like you went through trauma and I think I'm the same way because like I, I was married previously uh, and like, I like people, I, the attention span of the internet is like a half a second. So a lot of people don't remember or like, don't remember it, but it's like, I, that was a thing that happened. I was very happy in that moment, but that like things happened and I was put in a position where like, I was very untrusting to open myself up to another individual. So when I, it's a funny story, but when I, uh, like Bree and I were friends first, which was really, really cool, mm-hmm. uh, because there was a level of comfort first And when we started becoming like romantically involved, I was just like, this is all the shit that happened to me. I have, I have issues. Like I have some trust issues, trust issues. I have some like difficulty, not difficulty expressing my emotions. I'm very good at expressing my emotions. I have some difficulty controlling the expressions of my emotions. Mm -hmm. And I just, I led with it because I was like, I'm not, I'm not interested. Like everybody has like their like their their fun phase where they go out and like just go to part. They're single. It's their single phase. Whatever. Everybody has that or a blip of that or whatever. Mm-hmm. But like I was like I don't. I'm I'm tired. I don't want to fucking do that. I'm like this is all my shit. Take it or leave it. And Bree was like, okay, this is all my shit. And I'm like, okay, can this work together? And she's like, yeah. And it's like, okay, sweet. Let's let's do something here. And the funny story is like we had never hung out as boyfriend girlfriend we were just friends like remotely yeah. and the first time we ever hung out as boyfriend girlfriend i actually took her home to thanksgiving dinner Whoa! Uh, that was the f- <laughs> big, big, no, it, i and that's the th- i have one speed i'm 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 on or off and i was like because she's like well what, where are you going for thanksgiving we're just fucking shit talking and and you can talk to her about it but she and i'm like I'm going home and I'm like, ah, you know, I don't know. Be cool to bring a pretty girl over there. And she's like, I'm not doing anything. And I'm like, fuck this bitch. Cause it's just continue. It's we're friends. It's like continual shit talk. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, you want to come? And she's like, are you serious? And I'm like, I don't know. Am I fucking serious? Are you going to say yes? And she's like, fuck it. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, I'll buy your fucking ticket. See you there. And I took her and I was just like, this is Brianni. I wasn't like, this is my girlfriend or whatever, but I was just like, this is Brianni. And then it was like, okay, cool. And then we hit it, hit it off. And then it's just kind of like, well, shit. All right. This is what we're doing. And it's been like that ever since. So one speed, I don't know, on or off dude. So uh yeah. Yeah. That's That's amazing. So I I don't know if it was easy. I don't think it, I I wouldn't, cause I, going back to the original question, I don't think it's like, I don't think it's going to be easy initially, but you like if you go through the shit where it's like sticky and hard and f- that's jokes, <laughs> jokes, <laughs> jokes. <laughs> um, God damn it! Where it's like where it's like, you go through the trauma, you go through the bullshit, mm-hmm. where it's like you don't give like it doesn't matter if it's fucking hard. It's like this is just the way that it is. Like this, this is the stuff. This is the stuff that we're going to have to address now or later. Let's just fucking do it now. And, and you, you get to a point where like you, it's more easy to do that because you've gone through the bullshit before. Mm. So, yeah. No, that's pretty amazing. Like, yeah. I, you know, one thing that seems to be just a theme with you guys, actually the theme with, cause when we had this conversation too, is that you guys are with people that are able to like, number one, like you can communicate that and they're able to be receptive about it. Mm-hmm. Because I think w- one thing I hear from a lot of guys is that women cannot handle the like men actually talking about those emotions because it makes them seem weaker. That's a theme that I'm getting back from a lot of people. Like, ooh, if you do that, they're going to run for the hills because they're going to think you're a little bit weak and you can't handle your emotions and your shit. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. you guys have found people that they're like, 
okay, let's be adults and let's see if we can work through this together because you're a man, but you can also have these feelings about shit. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing. I hear people say, uh, they'll say, oh, my wife would never go for that. And I'm always like, man, that's not good. You no. should, be able to, should be able to at least have a conversation about mm -hmm. it. Right. At least be able to talk about it, even if it's uh, something that they're not into or something that they disagree with. You should still be able to have some sort of dialogue about it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's like how... How fun, how how exciting is life if you just have someone that is like, just like, yes, yes, dear, yes, dear. Okay, yeah, let's do that. It's like, no, there, I I would just clone myself at that point. I don't, I, don't, I fucking hate myself. I don't love myself enough for that. Like I want, it's, it's, it's about having someone who compliments you and is different, different enough. But like it's the God damn it! This is the very it beginning. Challenges it was, you. Yeah, it challenges you, but yeah. it's the it's the light shining through the prism. It's yeah. like the same light. Because at the beginning, it's like Jake and I, it's like at a different angle, so we're different colors. But it's the same thing. It's like light through the prism, different colors. So it's like the same fucking base thing, but it's slightly different enough, but it's still just as beautiful as whatever the fuck you are, too. It's just a different thing. It's just different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Philosophy. Fucking yeah. Well, taking too many mushrooms. Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh. <laughs> Let me ask you this, man. Um, for, I guess... Some of the out, outside of fitness books you've read, because I'm, I'm curious what kind of stuff that you guys read as far as fitness is concerned, but what type of stuff do you pay attention to as far as philosophy? Like what kind of stuff have you read that has given you some base knowledge on some of this and has allowed you to do some of your own free thinking? I've been talking, you talk. I want to think more. <laughs> as far as like books or like or podcast or like what? Like yeah, any, like, like anything, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like what are the stuff that you pay attention to for some of the things that you guys are talking about currently? Um, so there's a couple of people that I follow that uh, I, I really like to listen to that have like similar brains to us. Like Alex Kegel is a big one. Broderick Chavez is a big one. I haven't heard of either um, of these guys. Andrew oh, Triana. Yeah, uh, he actually, yeah. so Andrew Triana might be one of the freaking smartest people He's a on savant. the planet. Yeah, he's uh, and there's kind of a reason probably that you don't know them. They are a little bit like not trying to be social media, uh, you know, influencers or whatever. But Andrew Triana actually has a website called Go Super Brain that's really freaking sweet. Go Super Brain, yeah, yeah. Dude, go, go check it out. It liter it's, literally, it's sign amazing. up for it. Like I'm telling both of you to sign up for like it. If it's you amazing. if you want to yeah. be a, a better performer in any aspect, business, life, freaking relationships, wow. powerlifting, I don't know, whatever. You got to go check that out. It's mm -hmm. it, it like retrains the way that you think, um, which is incredible. But there are a couple minds like that that I, I really like to follow. They have podcasts. They have, you know, uh, prescri or subscription uh, websites and stuff that I really like to follow. Um, that that are putting out content fairly similar to us, different mm -hmm. different avenues, different you know philosophies, but kind of the same thing. Yeah, and and that's that's pretty much the same exact answer I was going to give in terms of like my, like modern folks but like i it like J jake and i both have a religious background i'm not mm -hmm. i wouldn't call myself religious at this point i'm like i think there's something but i don't fucking know like it like it, it's it's what it's just how it is but the point of the point of it is uh like i i went to a jesuit college their whole motto is go forth and set the world on fire there's a reason i have live learn and pass on tattooed on on my arm it's it's more about action and it's more about going to do good and like leave shit better than you found it and like not just not just accept things for the way that they are because like ah shitty people are shitty it's like yeah okay that that's true but if shitty people are shitty not everybody wants to be shitty. Not everybody wants to like, and, and shitty people are literally, uh, nobody, nobody's bad. Right. Everybody just doesn't know I how to deal with, yeah, that. nobody knows how to deal with their trauma. People like literally don't know that they're fucked up until they do this self introspection. And some people don't have the tools to do it. Yeah. So like you always have to understand that everyone's experience is different. And like, if you can go out and do a little bit of good, record a little podcast, put, put your own irresponsible drug use on blast to maybe help somebody else think a little bit more in the future to maybe not, or to maybe at least ask a question and inspire them to like, not just accept things for the way that they are. Then that's, that, that's, that, that's God. That's, right. that's spirit. That's truth. That's the good shit that we're here to do. Cause like, and that's my biggest thing. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm like, it's like optimistic nihilism. It's like, we're all going to fucking die, but that's the beauty of it. It's like, we can, we, we, this is so fucking special that we have this life that we're here right here mm -hmm. right now because every, every fucking piece of trauma, every, the suicide attempt, my fuck it, like all the shit that I've been through, like it put me in this position to be here right now. And whoever the fuck is listening to this, 
you're in a position to listen to this and maybe you can take one piece of information and pass it on to somebody else. You might not like it. The whole thing is one person can't change the world. I, I really don't think they can, or it doesn't matter if they can, but one person or one thing that you do can change someone else's entire world. And that's the biggest takeaway of like anything you can fucking hear. Yeah. I think the, the, the way that the way, uh, the world is right now, it's, we like to think about ourselves, our social media, how many likes we have, how many followers, everything's about ourselves, ourselves, ourselves. We're always looking inward, but I think, and, and it's really easy to get caught up on the people like, Oh, how could they do that? I can't believe they posted that. I can't believe they said that. Oh, that guy, he's such a dick or whatever. But I, I really think that to know somebody is to love them. Right. If you were to sit down with anybody and really have a conversation and, and like the biggest asshole in the world, right? Sit down, have a conversation with them, went through their life, their trauma. You'd probably understand them. And you'd be like, this guy, yes. he's not a bad dude, right? Like he's just, it's just trauma that's creating more trauma. But if you can control your own trauma and stop creating other trauma for the future generations, you know, we're in a pretty good place. I think that's really what life's about. Mm-hmm. Fucking dope. Mm-hmm. That's dope a shit. great way to, great place to end it, I believe. Um, Andrew, want to take us on out of here? Yeah, sure. Uh, before we even do that, though, I did want to ask Joe, and this is like a, I don't know, it's, it's hard for me to even formulate it into a question, but... Um, Those are the best. Yeah, well, it's, it's just like when you start to recognize that things are, you're, like that dark clouds come in your way, how do you not let things like snowball or s- like spiral out of control? Uh, and, and if somebody's not like sure what I'm even getting at, it's like if you have like a, a PR set pro- in your program for like Friday and Monday morning you wake up with a tight back and it's like, oh, I should be okay. And then Tuesday it's like, oh, I think it's hurting a little bit more. And then in actuality, like that back is not even a problem, but that's all you think about all week. So come PR day, fuck, I'm not going to hit this PR because my back's messed up. So when you do see like, fuck, dude, I'm having a bad day. How do you stop that in its tracks? So I don't really think you stop it in its tracks. You accept it. You, you, you have to be okay with it. It's like, it, like I love, I, I really enjoy like uh, uh, Buddhism and like reading about like detachment and whatnot because like you have to be okay. Like it, it, it's all of it is fucking juxtaposition. It's all like, it all contradicts itself, but that's like the fun part of all these stupid fucking conversations and why we talk too much. <laughs> but it, because it's like what you, you have to, you have to not care a little bit, not, not care, but you have to be okay with being detached from the outcome. It's like, if like I go into a like go, training for this past showdown me. I wanted to re-break my all-time world record. There were certain like indicator lifts, indicator numbers that I wanted to hit that were going to tell me, they basically tell me like, okay, I'm on the right path. I'm going to, I hit 777 for a double last year. So I want to hit 789 for a double. But I went and did a seminar at Jake's gym uh, in Salt Lake City. And uh, that day I hit 789 for a single and it was shitty. It was really, really slow. It felt like dick just fucking horrible but i had i was like okay i could panic right now i am like freaking out because i'm not, i don't have as much momentum as i did last year but i also have to understand this was after a flight it was after uh like your fucking uh ac was broken yeah, so it was like 78 degrees in the guest bedroom so we were fucking dying <laughs> but like it, it's like all these external factors and it's it's about not be, like like the same thing that I was talking about. Not letting you become your emotions or you become your your feelings. They're just aspects of you. So these are just aspects of your experience, and you have to identify as you lead up to that. Okay, my back is tight. Okay, my back is tighter. Okay, ah, fuck, I'm, man, I'm not even going to be able to train today. Really, be okay with that. What can you do? What's within your power? What's within your control that day to make the back a little bit better? to put yourself in a position where you can train because I, and I would tell this to a client. I would tell it to a friend. I would apply it to myself. I would rather, I would rather have a good day where I don't make any, I would rather have a day where I stay the same than go for something and make myself worse. I would rather this, this is like basically plateau, not plateauing, but staying at the same level is better than going for something that's unreasonable because you're too frustrated or too prideful to accept the fact that this is the way things are and detach yourself from that outcome and go for it and then tank yourself. Because how, how often, like we, I was talking about it with you going into the showdown. There were days where like, I always squat on Sundays. It's traditional squat on Sundays. It's how I do it. It's like, it's literally always how it is. But sometimes like I would go in, I'd wake up on a Sunday and I just felt off. Just kind of like, what the fuck's going on? Like, I'm not, I'm just not as awake. I was like wired tired. I just mm-hmm. took a little bit too much caffeine the, the day before. And I'm like, 
well, you know, oh, fuck my schedule. I have to do this. I have to do it today. But if you pull yourself back and slow yourself down a little bit and be like, I don't have to do anything. I really don't have to do anything. I could quit right now if I wanted to. It's not that far. But like, I don't have to do this today. So what's, what's, what, what, did, what is it if I just fucking sit on my ass and watch some somebody feed Phil today? You know, reset, reset myself. Have a, have a good day with the things that I can control. And then I wake up the next day and I feel way better. And I'm like, now I'm going to strike while the iron's hot. I'm going to go get after it when I feel good, when I know I'm in a position where I'm better oriented for success and there's less risk, there's less pride, there's rest like it has to be this way. So it's, it's, not, it's not a good answer because it's different every time, but you just have, you have to be okay with just accepting things as how they are and working with them, not against them. I think, uh, I think that was really well said. It just sounds to me like you introduce facts. But the hard yes. thing about trying to introduce facts if you're anxious or depressed uh, would be to introduce real facts and not have them blown out of proportion to where they're making you more anxious or more depressed. And so the only other answer for that is to just really try to take your time. And like you're talking about, like, hey, maybe I'll just chill and watch some TV. And you're going to be able to think through the reasons why you're so bothered for that particular day. Probably more accurately, especially when you take your time with it. Yeah, I think I think with uh, a lot of people right now, we always want to do something right now. We've got to be successful right now. Yeah. But then we step back, and you're like, man, we're still in our 20s. Like, mm-hmm. do I really have to do this right now, right? Do I really want to push myself back and, or risk pushing myself back? We're not, you know, you still have 10 years left of potential powerlifting, right? Does it have to be now? And I think just putting that in perspective, like it's the long haul. It's always about the long haul. Like what can you do consistently day in and day out? That's That's where you want to be. What's your In N Out Burger Monster Mash thing? Oh, oh here yeah. we go. Oh, yeah. 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 It's like yeah, yeah, top yeah. secret shit, yeah. but yeah. we got to we got to get excited. Grip. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, no, dude, it's I'm good. I'm excited. I might have to do this later cuz it's, mm-hmm. it's 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 so I love In N Out. In N Out is great. Yeah. In N Out is awesome, but I figured out a really 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 nice thing to do with it. So you get In N Out double double mm-hmm. animal style cuz you you obviously always get it animal style, but mm-hmm. you get it protein style, which is that lettuce wrap. And it's like, okay, yeah, I'm not like why are we, are we like dieting or doing mm-hmm. keto or the fucking carnivore or whatever the fuck? I don't know. No. What we're doing here is you take it, you get the protein style, and then you go back to your house and you put it in a bowl of rice. I'm going to do and this like today. That dude, that Stan Efforting, like vertical this. diet shit, you fucking mash that motherfucker. Yeah. And it's like, it's monster mash on steroids. What, because, what I'm upset yeah. about is I didn't know about this till a day too. Oh, I'm like, sorry. He's been keeping this from me the whole time. I don't know, man. I didn't I think thought we were it. best yeah. friends. Well, Stan Efforting yeah. is rolling over in his yeah. grave yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. not yeah. even yeah. dead. It's like, that is not what this is supposed to be. But yeah, no, no, try that. Try that and tag me. Stan's going to be like, no, it's got weird oils in it and stuff. He's going to be like, that's the fun part. That is the, that's why it tastes so good. God, it is really good yeah, dude oh yeah it, but yeah it's like it's monster mash on steroids oh, it's monster mash on uh I atp think should, i think we should try that today <laughs> yeah. 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 you know about I'm the down. flying dutchman i was gonna say That's my shit what is a flying dutchman the flying oh. dutchman it just comes with just meat and cheese it's a dutch oh dutch. god yeah i've cheese. heard of that that's insane just yeah. do, yeah. do, do an animal style flying dutchman so fuck the lettuce i would yeah, yeah why, I, why is the lettuce in yeah there? i would yeah. really man that's yeah so is it just a double double yeah without anything yeah well yeah just the good parts that's fine i don't know well i i feel like I should eat something green. This, nah. this, this <laughs> it's not decade. necessary. Yeah. But yeah, you can no, you yeah. can get the uh, the Flying Dutchman extra mustard fried, and mm. they fry it in the mustard, so it's mm. phenomenal. Well, I also personally like whole grill because yes. you can get a whole grilled onion on it. I, pr- that's I don't a lot. I'm, I'm an legit, onion yeah. guy, but whatever. What the fuck? Oh, the onions are good. Yeah, no, the whole yeah. Pause the goddamn fucking show. I, I love know. Fucking vinegary shit. It, what do you mean, fry it in the mustard? So they mustard fried. Yeah. So it's it's similar to what they would do in an animal style, but you can get it without all the extra stuff if you don't want like the uh, the Thousand Island dressing and all yeah. that shit. You just tell them either mustard fried or what I do is I say extra mustard fried. So they like coat it in mustard and then fry it. Oh my it's, gosh, we gotta go try that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's go try I didn't that. know that was that fucking movable. <laughs> no, no. I'm, do, I'm doing that shit. Yeah, dude, it's amazing. Literally, it's literally, so good. We're, oh, we're, yeah. Cause we're, we're all staying together. You yeah. see, I, fu- yeah. I, dude, Yellow mustard, yeah. I fuck with that all day. Yeah, I like beef, beef and rice and just fucking. Ugh. That will happen yeah, today. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm I'm super down <laughs> Hell for yeah. that. That's I'm cool. super stoked about that. Fuck that sword too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's there. No worries. Yeah. I can't wait to go eat now. Yeah. <laughs>
All right. Want to take us out sure of here, thing. Thank you, everybody, for checking out today's episode. Uh, please drop us a like and a comment and subscribe if you are not subscribed to uh, the podcast right now. Uh, please follow the podcast at Mark Bell's Power Project on Instagram, at MB Power Project on TikTok and Twitter. My Instagram and Twitter is at I am Andrew Z at the Andrew Z on TikTok and Sima. Where are you at? I didn't see my ending on Instagram and YouTube. I didn't see my ending on TikTok and Twitter. Jake and Joe, where can they find you guys on your podcast? Right. Yeah. Uh, it is the PED podcast. It's on Spotify. I, I have not gotten it on iTunes yet just because I haven't fucking put the effort to do it. But the PED podcast on Spotify. Uh, my website is theaodcollective.com. Stands for Adapter Die, which is the whole fucking MO of every goddamn thing we've talked about today. Uh, and it's Joe Sullivan underscore AOD on Instagram. And okay. TikTok. And TikTok. Yeah. I, I, no do, TikTok. I forget that I have fucking TikTok, dude. I don't know. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I have not gone into that yeah but instagram jakeyb underscore 43 um jake benton yeah awesome thank you guys so much for being on the show today really appreciate it yeah, thank That's you for having us it was awesome strength is never a weakness weakness is never strength catch y'all later